This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hey, everybody, this is Chase from Barrel Age Flicks. Go ahead and check out our Patreon for raw, uncut footage and early access to all of our episodes. The link is in the description, and it's only $5 a month. Thanks for listening. reasons why the West was wild. No one's fool enough to go in after Murphy's people. Emilio Estevez. I'm in. Deputize them. Keeper Sutherland. You look like trouble. Trouble? You think I look like trouble? I'm a poet. McSween, those are just boys. Ain't one of them over 21. Murphy's men will shred them in half within a day. Casey Shimashko. I'm a pugilist. Court adjourned. Dermot Mulroney. He ain't all there, is he? Lou Diamond Phillips. My vision told me we're headed for blood. Charlie Sheen. We got warrants for the law! You were supposed to serve 11 warrants and expose the ring. Instead, you went out and you went on the warpath. The governor's revoked your deputization powers. You're now wanted by the legitimate law as well as those outside the law. You're being hunted by troops. I like these odds. <laughs> Young Guns. Considered by the court that William H. Bonney be hanged till he be dead, dead, dead. You can go to hell, hell, hell. <laughs> when I start, it, amigos. You're not dead. Do I look dead? <laughs> the entire country is reading about our territory every day in the journals. Should we give him a proper burial? And they're not reading about our growth towards statehood. I never stole a horse from someone I didn't like. Nah, he just kill him. What they are reading about is a 21-year-old delinquent. What scum? Who is making us look like imbeciles. Politicians, bankers, cattle kings. Scum. I got 18 dimes in each barrel, boy. You're starting to believe what they're writing about you, aren't you? Oh, Bob! You wrote a 15-year-old boy straight into his grave. Goodbye, Bob! This dollar eighty I ever spent. <laughs> and the rest of us, straight to hell. I don't take to tenderfoots in my gang. It ain't your gang, Dave. Let's hire a thief. Thousand dollars, Mr. Garrett, to catch one. And all the resources you need to carry out the extermination. <laughs> Just playing the game, Doc. Have one, William H. Bonnie. Even their horses are crazy. We'll give them a game, Lauren. They're starting to surround us. We gotta get out of here, Dave. It's your gang. What? It ain't my gang, it's your gang. It's always been your gang. Emilio Estevez, Kiefer Sutherland, Lou Diamond Phillips, Christian Slater, Balthazar Getty, Alan Ruck, James Coburn, and William Peterson as Pat Garrett. You who? I'll make you famous. Young Guns 2. Welcome to Barrel Age Flicks. This is Rod. I have been traumatized. And in the show we have... And this is Stu. I hate Ron. And finally... This is Ragnar. I'm so confused right now. Hello, guys. Welcome to BAF. Hola. Hi. Hello. And we are doing... How are you? I'm... Oh, because I started with hello? I don't know why I did hello. Hello. I don't know either. (laughs) By the way, we we have a guest of the show. We have Adam. (laughs) Hello, Welcome hello. back, Adam. Hello. Our peanut gallery. He's actually going to join us in on this episode, and uh, we are going to be doing Ragnar's movies, his set of movies, Young Guns and Young Guns 2. Uno, dos. So Young Guns was released August 12th, 1988, directed by Christopher Gain. Other movies to his name. You guys remember Gone Fishing? Mm-hmm. With uh, Pesci and uh, um, uh, what's his name from uh, Lethal Weapon? Uh, Danny Glover? Yep. Yeah. That was a good one. Uh, Rose Hill, The Next Karate Kid, which I think is when uh, Hillary Swank came into the play. Uh, Where the River Runs Black, Charlie and the Talking Buzzard, and The Principal. I, I don't know if you ever heard any of those movies. The Principal, yeah. Charlie yeah, the and the Talking yeah. Buzzard, no. Uh, the movie had a $13 million budget. $13 in, in million. million? 
what did I say? Thirteen dollar million. million. Not really, thirteen million dollar budget. There you go. I don't know how I said that wrong. (laughs) The movie had a thirteen dollar budget. budget. (laughs) It seemed like it when the fucking. I'll talk about that scene. Uh, Made forty four million domestically. Movie stars: Emilio Estevez, Kiefer Sutherland, Lou Diamond Phillips, Charlie Sheen, Dermot Mulroney, Mm -hmm. Casey Simasco, Terrence Stamp, Jack Palance was. We all knew who Jack Palance is. He's a classic actor right there. And Terry O'Quinn. Rotten Tomatoes score. I'm going to start giving a Rotten Tomatoes score of every movie that we do now just to see what how it differences from us. So it got a 43% for critical. So it got rotten, and it got a 76% for user. So this was very popular with the, with the, uh, mm-hmm. the crowd, but critically, it was not well done. So uh, we're going to go ahead, before we talk about the second one, let's go ahead and do the drink first. So Ragnar, what did you bring for the uh, drink to the table? Uh, I brought basically a, a hodgepodge, modge, sh- shellacking of uh, liquor. Uh, so we've got tequila, Kahlua, Goldschlager, uh, Amaretto, uh, butterscotch, liqueur, and Bailey's. So we're calling this the six shooter. There we go. And that's what you f- you found this online, or is this something that you made? No, I'm not that fucking creative. <laughs> not, not. Google's my friend for shit sometimes. It's a lot of creamy, a lot of. It's gonna be interesting. It is. So. All right. Pro Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Eh. Kind of reminds me of Christmas. Maybe it's because of the peppermint. Is it peppermint or is it cinnamon? No, no. no. Gold slogger. The Gold slogger. Yeah. It's. <laughs> what was that? I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to give this. It exists. It's it's fine. Yeah. Um, I'll give it a a half a thumb. Okay. Up. I mean, it's not bad. Is it great? Probably not. Yeah. But it's there. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> sweet, absolutely sweet on it. I don't know. It, it doesn't taste like hard hard liquor though. I will yeah. say that does you don't taste any hard liquor in it. Uh, so this would be something that could fuck you up. Mm-hmm. I'll definitely say that. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I have oh, yeah. some. Yeah, definitely. Adam, Adam, well, you're, you're, yeah, and you're asking somebody who doesn't drink. So, um, it wasn't bad. Um, and yes, Anna, I did try it. I know she's going to say, <laughs> "Did you actually drink it?" <laughs> so, yes, I did try it a little bit. Yeah, I gave you, I gave you half the ingredients. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you very much. So. It was a one. It wasn't bad. I guess if somebody put it in front of me and I didn't have to drive home again, I'd probably try it again. But yeah. Okay. All right. I'll give it a one. I'll give it a one. It's very, it's very sweet, very sweet, and definitely hit on the mark where you don't taste any of the alcohol, and this is a multiple shots of this can fuck you up with the amount of liquor that it has mm-hmm. in this. Uh, the peppermint taste is really, it kind of reminds me of just like drinking Kahlua with peppermint, like a, a peppermint Kahlua. I don't know where you're getting the peppermint. Yeah, I don't yeah. taste peppermint. I don't know what that Why do I keep saying cinnamon. peppermint? I don't know why I can't, cinnamon, sorry, cinnamon. I, I'm getting cinnamon and peppermint mixed up, but a cinnamon uh, Kahlua, that's basically what it tastes like. It even looks like Kahlua with the uh, the whole coffee look, like the uh, um, like a coffee creamer or yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's okay. I mean, if somebody offered this to me, I'd drink it. Uh, you know, have a shot with it. It's it's definitely not my go to. I'd rather have like a whiskey or a bourbon other than a creamy drink like this. Other than you know a White Russian, though, I will always take a White Russian. But yeah, I'll, I'll give this one. It's not bad. It's I drink it again, but okay. it's not something I'd like. It's not my go to. Yeah, you're gonna have something creamy here in a couple of weeks, there, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I can't Whoa. wait. Mm-hmm. Whoa, Porky! But yeah, I'm whoa! Okay. No, 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 no. Just saying, yeah, we're, we're, we're y'all doing Porky. No, we're the clockwork orange one. <laughs> oh God! What Jesus. is it? Titty milk? I mean, seriously, that's what you're probably naming the drink, isn't it? No, just gin and milk. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so you are just doing gin and milk. Yep. You just doing rock gut gin, or are you doing no, a real no, good I, gin? Some, a decent, you know, an orange tank array. Well, that's what I suggested to you. Uh, I mean, because yeah, when you had the peach and milk, which mm-hmm. he brought in, that was yeah. like fucking amazing. Yep. That tasted great. So that's gonna be fun. Yeah, well, but a one. Cool. I'll give it a one. Uh, it's nothing I would order again. It's simple, easy. Uh, you taste a lot of the. Uh, so you taste. So there's Bailey's, uh, Kahlua, and Amaretto. And all right, it, so that's probably what so it all is. That's all that Kahlua sweetness taste. Yeah. that you're tasting yeah. from it. And then the Goldschlager has is the cinnamon, the tequila, which I'm actually surprised you really don't taste it that much. I don't taste, uh, the, and I don't taste the butterscotch either. Yeah, you, you said there was really, butterscotch in this. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't taste any butterscotch. So yeah, each one is a third ounce for for each one. 
So uh, it's supposed to be served in a double shot glass. I just didn't trust it. You know what? So I think I've marked this in my black book before because I do remember something called a six shooter. and I do remember it having all this. and I didn't have all the ingredients because I was going through my book to f- find out shots and stuff to make for whenever friends come over for a drink and stuff like yeah. that. I do remember seeing this in the black book for the six shooter. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think it's a great effort, though. I mean, it's good for the movie yeah. when you think about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, it works. If it's there, I'll drink it, but I'm not going to, like, fucking go out of my way to order one. Yeah. So. I'll probably charge you, like, $15 for this shot of this or something like that with all the liquor that has least. in it. Yeah, for a double shot. That's not about right. Mm-hmm. About $15, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, good job bringing it in. That was uh, that was a good uh, drink to try out for the show. Not too bad. Yeah. It was all right. All right, we're going to go ahead and go the details. But if you're wanting if you're wanting whiskey. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> Buffalo Trace yep. Kentucky God damn, I don't have my glasses. Bourbon whiskey. There yeah, bu- Buffalo Trace. Yep. All right, let's little start. airplane bottles of uh, yeah. Buffalo Trace that right now was ABC today. Very nice. So, it's right in the counter. Prost. Cheers. So was did that catch on Mike? No. <laughs> the gurgle. <laughs> oh yeah, that I can hear that from here. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't bad. Are we reviewing it? Might as well. I can, if, can if you want. Are you give that a two? That's a two. Yeah. I've never had this before. Have you? Yeah. I've never had this before. Um, I'll give it's it a, a two. Very it's, popular. Yeah. Yeah. Very I've popular. Never had it. You haven't had Buffalo Trace on the show before? Mm-mm. No, I don't think anybody's ever brought that in. I could have sworn I've heard y'all talk about it before. Probably talked about it, yeah. just never had it on the show. Okay. Yeah. Right, it's one of the more popular. Yeah, higher end yeah. considered uh, drinks. So. Yeah. How much does the bottle it's hard go to for? Find. Yeah, so so that, limited uh, limited quantities. So yeah, yes. did that, they have any full bottles over at ABC, or they just had these? Just these. That's crazy that they were limited have... sales. Um, like only each store only gets a certain number of bottles if they get them in uh, normally, and so it'll be an allotment type deal. What's uh, the price point on the bottle? Like forty, fifty bucks? No, it's more than that. Oh, they're that expensive? Oh, they're pricey. Yeah. It's considered a higher end one. I've never had it before. That's the first time I've had it. It's not bad. I like it. See I'll it. give it a two. It's good. Yeah, they're very. It's hard to fucking come by. So whenever they get them in, it's they go by quick. All right, so let's go ahead and talk the details of Young Guns Two. Young Guns Two was released August first, nineteen ninety, directed by Geoff Murphy. The other movies he's done is Free Jack, mm. uh, The Wild Side, Under Siege Two. Mm-hmm. He also did Spooked, Blindside, and Never Say Die. Spooked? Spooked. Spooked. Oh, okay. Spooked. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I say spooked. Yeah, yeah. spooked. Yeah. yeah, spooked. There you go. Uh, the movie, I could not find the budget for this movie for some reason. I kept looking at different websites, and I could not find the budget. Maybe if you can find it for me and you correct me. $13. It made, yeah, it, 13 bucks. <laughs> it made $44 million, so it actually made the exact same as uh, Young Gun, the first one. But for some reason, I could not find the budget. The uh, movie stars Emilio Estevez. Key twenty Sutton. million estimated. Was it twenty million? Yep. Okay. I don't know why. I had a hard time finding that. I, I kept have, looking on sites. Young Guns Two made fifty nine million just U.S. Then maybe yeah. I was looking at the same one yeah. or something like that. So thanks for yeah. correcting me. So it's uh, how much was it that it made? Fifty nine. Fifty nine million. So it made more than the uh, first one, and the budget was uh, twenty. Uh, twenty two. All right. So thirteen million up to twenty two. Uh, Million, so it got a, a higher budget. Usually sequels really do sometimes. Planet of the Apes didn't. Uh, Milio Estevez, Keith, Kiefer Sutherland, Lou Diamond Phillips, Christian Slater, who's a new one, William Peterson, which I did not know he was in this movie. That was fucking crazy right there. Mm-hmm. Um, Alan Ruck, Virgo, Vigo Mortison, another Mortensen. one. Mortensen. Mortensen. What did I say? Mortison. 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 <laughs> Mortison. Well, I, I think this this is actually one of his first movies, I believe. Vigo Mortician. Leon Rippey, Tracy Walter, Scott Wilson, Bradley Whitford, Jenny Wright. Ginger Lynn, the porn star, was in this movie. She was one of the whores in the whorehouse. And James Colburn. And who did I miss? A very, very famous person. John Bon Jovi. Where was John Bon Jovi? He was just a cowboy. <laughs> just a random fucking just, cowboy. Just random dude. Yeah. Did it show his face and everything? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I missed that. I did not know. Yeah. I didn't know that he cameoed in this. I know yeah. he did the... Uh, uh, the, the song, soundtrack. Yeah. the soundtrack, but I didn't know the cameo in it. Yeah. Uh, the score was done by Alan Silvestri. He actually did it for the second one for Young uh, Young Guns 2. And the Rotten Tomatoes score for this one, this was kind of hurtful because I, I don't agree with this at all. It got a 31% for critical, 
it got a 61% from users. So both of them are ripe from the user score, but when it comes to the critical score, both of them are rotten. I can understand that for the first one, but I guess we'll talk about more of that about this movie. So let's go ahead and take our break, and we will be right back. Are you looking for a place for all things horror and don't know where to go? Well, you've came to the right place, my friend. We are the Graveyard Club podcast. For all your horror needs, visit us on YouTube and Spotify, and you can follow us over on Instagram at the Graveyard Club pod. See you there. Ciao. All right, we are back with the show, so I'm going to go back to Ragnar. He's hosting this, so uh, why'd you pick these two movies? I don't know. It <laughs> felt just felt like a good idea at the time. Now, now I'm just regretting it. <laughs> Actually, this was something we were planning on doing last year, and it just got pushed back. So now, so I I chose these because they're great movies. When these were made, westerns were kind of dying off. Yes. So there wasn't really any westerns made like for a long fucking time, you know. And this actually helped revamp the uh, the western theme, the modern theme, the modern western theme. Yep. Depends on the movie. Well, when you think about it, a lot of westerns that came Don't out in the eighties. Wild Wild West. No, by, <laughs> in the eighties. I think by modern western he means the uh, a western made with modern sensibility. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, like Tombstone so, okay. or uh, Unforgiven. Yeah. Uh, but when I'm thinking about the eighties, the only eighties westerns that I can remember are Silverado, mm-hmm. uh, Wired Earp. There wasn't that many westerns in the eighties, really. Tell you the truth. Uh, what's that one? Wired Earp was in the eighties. Yes, it was. I, you know what? I might be wrong I on that. I think you're wrong I might that. Be, that, might be like 90, that might be 90. That might be 1990 or it might be 1989. I think it's 1989. Is it? Okay. I think so. I, I could be wrong. And also, there was another one with uh, Tom Selleck that was really good in the Outback with Alan Rickman as the villain. The Outback. Or uh, Outback. Um, uh, yeah, I know you're talking about. Uh, Quigley. Quigley Down Quigley Under. Under. That's there a you go. good movie. Yeah. That's yep. a good movie. You remember, was like, that, was that 80s? That was 90s. Okay. That was, that was, that was 90s. But that that's what I would call like the modern right. uh, Western, yeah, basically. Right, where yeah. What was uh? So you've got uh, Silverado, yep, Pale Rider, uh, Young Guns, Urban Cowboy, which doesn't really count. Urban uh, Cowboy. I mean, I, yeah, no, John I, I, I could see that being idea of a modern western. Yeah, I could. Mm. But, nah, I'm talking about like western, like no, shoot I, guns. I know, and, I know, but yeah. the feel of Urban Cowboy was yeah. a yes. western. Yeah. Uh, and modern then you've got uh, Long Riders. Okay. Heaven's Gate. Uh, okay. Bronco Billy. Three Amigos. <laughs> that is Western. That's a Western. Yep. The the man from Snowy River. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. That's uh, a Western. Those, those were good movies. That's the 80s? Yeah. I thought that was 90s. That was Australian. Then you got Shadow Riders. Don't know that one. Uh, let's see here. The Legend of the Lone Ranger. Dances with Wolves was 1990. Death Hunt. Tom Horn. Don't know uh, that one. Barbarossa. Uh, hmm. What was that? Honky Tonk Man. Bar- Wait a minute. Barbarossa? Uh-huh. I thought that was like 60s. 80, no, I'm 82. I'm thinking of something else. Yeah. I'm thinking of Barbarella, and that's a yeah. sci fi. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, fuck. Not that's that many well known. Yeah, but not that many well known ones. When you think of a. The Quick and the Dead. That's 1990. Nope, 87. Then the Quick and the Dead is a remake, then. Quick and the Dead is Gene Hackman. Yeah. This, uh, Sharon Stone. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, this one's got a Tom Selleck in it. Or no. Uh, uh, he's quickly down under. No. Uh, I'm sorry. Sam, El- Sam Elliott. Oh, oh Sam Elliott. okay. I've never heard of the quick. It's called the quick and the dead. Yeah. I wonder if that one's a, a, the Sam Remy movies, a remake of that one. I don't think so. I have no idea, but oh, that would have been a fast turnaround for a remake. Uh, yeah. Well, out of all those movies, I know maybe like two or three of them. So, and young guns I've always known about. I've just never seen it. And in fact, I'm going to say this. This is my first time seeing the original movie. I've seen young guns too. When I was a kid, I've seen it on TV and I remember liking it and watching it a couple times. But that's the only time I remember watching it. This is the first one I've never seen. And I finally got to see it. And really, you really do not need the first movie to watch the second movie. You can, they, can also, they can be completely separate stories when you think about it. You can watch the second movie and not even think about the first movie. If they called Young Guns 2 just Young Guns, it would still be entertaining and you'd still understand. You know, it's a crew. I could see that, but you're going to miss they a miss, lot. They do yeah, make a lot of reference story. Story. Yeah, you may not they, understand they, some yeah. of the callbacks. But. Yeah. They do, but I mean, I, I still think you could still watch it as a standalone movie. You, I don't think you need to, but... No, no, I you guess I can watch it as alone, but yeah. I think it's better, and you can appreciate the characters more. And they did they did twist some mm-hmm. stuff, you know, um, hand waved away some stuff they set up in Young Guns. 
to fit better for Young Guns 2. Well, but, I got shocked yeah. because watching Young Guns 2, I was thinking like when they were talking about Billy the Kid saying, I was killed. I said, wait, how the fuck is this guy narrating if he was killed? So I didn't know about the whole history mm-hmm. About this guy saying that he's Billy the Kid, not knowing if it's a hoax or if it's real or something like that. Because I called Stu, was like, "Wait a minute, did they fucking change the story?" Because I I was confused because in the beginning or the end of the first movie is you know tells that he dies and he got killed, and then he's still alive as an old man in Young Guns Two in the beginning. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Did they change something around? So I didn't know about that whole history about him fading off to the point where he was still alive and then faking his death, basically potentially. Yeah. yeah, so never been proven and impossible to prove now um, because they don't know the exact I, location of his burial site. I did a no, lot of they research. But they, I, ha- they have a headstone for him, but they the headstone but that's was just in, a general yeah. location. They're like it's somewhere around here. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. most of the stuff that I read about uh, Billy Bush or whatever uh, the the old man and Brushy everything else, Bill Roberts. Brush, yes, there you go. Um, from what I've read, is that it's a hoax. That it's all a hoax. They've even have pictures by him with Billy the Kid. The face doesn't look right and everything else, but there's no proof of anything. They, they can't tell which which is real and which is not. So it makes it more interesting. No, that, that could be him. Have sworn affidavits from from that time frame from surviving people who knew mm-hmm. Billy the Kid, saying they believe that that's that supposed to be Bill to yeah. be him, and he also knew a lot of details. A lot more details than a, a than friend he, should. Yeah. And he also had the scars, same scars as Billy the Kid, too. Supposedly. That's what I read about. They said that he exact the exact same mm-hmm. scars that Billy the Kid had. So maybe. We, we, we'll never know. Yeah. yeah. No, and that that's one of the fun, actual cool mysteries about the these films and um and the real life character, you know, Billy the Kid is that everything will still be a mystery, even to this day, no yeah. matter what. You know. And no matter how much research is done, no matter how many fucking books are done um, and movies are done, there you're never actually going to fucking know. Like, did he die then by Pat Garrett, or did he actually fucking was it a hoax? Yeah, you know. Yeah. And this is somebody else's grave that they're somebody else that they're burying and shit. So um, now I know you said I told you on the phone that. Um, without knowing the history from the first one, that you can't appreciate it mm-hmm. and shit. So here's here's how everything basically happened. Okay, that you saw in the first one before you ever. Or no, no, this was after you watched the first one. Yeah, because I told you when I watched the first one, I, I told you I don't even think I finished all. I didn't finish it. I had to still watch. I enjoyed the ending. I enjoyed the shootout scene and everything else, and yeah. you know them. Uh, going over to uh, God, the uh, actor's name, the lost guy, forgot his name, who played the, when the house was burning down. Terry Quinn. Yeah. Yeah, Terry Quinn. Thank you. Uh, um, I enjoyed it up to that, and it the story got more interesting, but then it then it told the whole, you know, the little titles of what happened to all the guys, or they were talking about, you know, that he got killed and shot and stuff like that, but I was like, eh, it was okay. Mm-hmm. It was okay. And then I, I was like, the second one better be better, and then I watched the second one, and then that completely changed my opinion i i love the second one the yeah. second one was fun Rewatching, i was catching a lot more actors that i know nowadays that that i didn't remember they were in yes these films uh-huh. a lot more actors well i forgot God christian damn. slater was God in the damn. second God one God damn. God damn. God damn. Yeah. All right. I, I didn't realize christian slater was in the second one until being older i mean when yeah. i saw it as a kid i did not remember him being in this yep. like i totally forgot um i didn't even know until we were this time robert nepper was in the second one yeah you know, that comes by by complete surprise. Mm. I'm like, that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And he's playing such a Nancy boy right now. <laughs> right. The, the way the Lincoln County War ha- happened was basically produce is how it started. Yeah. Um, you had um, John Tunstall, who in the movie, he's an older gentleman mm-hmm. uh, from England. In real life, he's from England. But he was roughly around twenty four years old. They made him older in this. Uh huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is Terrence Stamp's character, right? Yeah. Yes. Hmm. And I can see why. I can see why they made him older. Well, they made him like a fatherly. They like, did like a fatherly character to them. Yeah. And he took in. He would take in wayward kids, you know, young men, and teach them how to be gentlemen. Yeah. How to behave in society. Yeah. Yeah. In modern society. Yep. 
So to read, write, work hard, you know, but to be able to defend, you know, what you have. His death was very predictable. Like I, I was expecting that to happen. Yeah, it was that that I knew was going to happen and change these guys. And yeah. Um, so like I said, it started, the whole thing started over produce. Uh, John Tunstall opened up a shop in town for beef and, uh, dry goods. Murphy opened, he already had a shop in town right? and doing the same fucking thing, uh, beef and, uh, dry good. So it was really about control over Lincoln County and, the ability to profit from this. Mm -hmm. So with John Tunstall coming into town, being an arrogant uh, 24-year-old, really fucking kicks up the hornet's nest with this. Really, his eagerness and drive to actually make a living and make a shit ton of fucking money is what started the whole thing. His death is what actually started it. Yeah. Um, But, like, he wasn't... In the movie, you see him, like, as his kind gentle seeming father figure to these young men Mm -hmm. now in reality he's a 24 year old kid he's an asshole (laughs) in real life he was an asshole in real life and he didn't really fuck he didn't bring these kids to his fucking property to help raise them properly and teach them the ways of acting you know no he hired he hired fucking outlaws he hired thugs he hired fucking anybody that he thought would be uh, good enough to protect uh, his ranch and defend it. And there's more than just six guys that you see. I here. wonder why they didn't stick to that story and just because then you wouldn't have had the automatic good and bad of the clear cut yeah. situation. Right. Yeah. All right. Because then it'd be like, okay, this guy's coming like, I'm going to be a fucking douchebag. He gets put down like the fucking dog that he is. Oh no! Let's get vengeance and justice for him. And I mean, <laughs> right. you're not rooting for yeah, for yeah. those guys, and you're like, okay, yeah. yep. I mean, I know, <laughs> <clears throat> you know. And there was more, and you know, there's only the six that you see, yeah, right. But in reality, there was roughly, I think, about twenty or so. Twenty right? in the gang. Twenty regulators, which makes sense for what they end up having to mm-hmm. do. And need it, six dudes versus. Entire territory, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just what he had. And he. They also had roughly, I think, around thirty Mexicans and shit okay. that, that supported him as well. They, along with the local, uh, local law law enforcement, there were. They had both. Uh, both parties had law enforcement on their side. It was really just a thing of who's better. Yeah. You know. And his death wasn't what you saw in. In the film, like they died, uh, he died January first, and on his way back. But he actually died in, I think it was February eighteenth, was the actual day that he died. Okay, and they were, I think they were going to Lincoln, not coming back from Lincoln. Interesting. Okay, and um, like they're they they Hollywoodize the movies. They normally do. You know, yeah. they do that with everything, every fucking movie really possible. And this is really what fucking started it. I liked the Terry Stamp. Uh, uh, I liked his character. You know, I, I, I like, you know, especially with her all at the dinner table, having dinner and everything else. And, you know, uh, going about the manners and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I, I enjoyed his character. And I was like, but I, I knew this guy wasn't going to last that long. And, of course, he didn't. Yeah. But uh, to see it that he was actually a 24-year-old kid that was an asshole, yeah. it's, it just <laughs> it gives you a different opinion about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was aggressive. He was greedy. But I think during that time frame, though, like you really had to be, especially like being a foreigner yeah. coming here, yeah. trying to trying to make your bones, right? You know, and he was British, yeah. So a twenty four year old British asshole. <laughs> Did I see that? Yeah. So any of our British listeners, I think it told it pretty accurately. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, not really though. Go have your tea. <laughs> <laughs> It uh let's see boo 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 yeah so Tunstall's death was the one that set everything in motion about roughly a quarter of the population was murdered over roughly five months after his death right t- t- uh, between that time frame you now when you say a quarter of the population how big a town are we actually talking about I mean maybe 
couple just, hundred. Okay. I would a assume. lot of people, though. It is. Yeah, it is. So well, say if we're talking of a town of 50 people, then mm-hmm. a quarter is not a lot. But if yeah. we're talking, like you said, two, 300 people, then yeah. Yeah. So a quarter of that figure, roughly 50 or so. Yeah. yeah. You know, which is actually pretty accurate. But most of that population was from both parties. So it really wasn't any really civilians that right. were that were harmed. Yeah. You know, and you you really see the impact of like in the movie of how he treated these guys. You know, he treated them with respect and not like a fucking dog like um like Murphy did yeah. to his guys. Mm. You know? It's almost a uh what's the word I'm looking for? A innocence that he kept around him. Yeah. But he let him go free, you know, when needed. Yeah. You know, and uh, in real life, it was like the complete opposite. You know, like I said, he wanted he wanted fucking hardcore guys, outlaws and shit that to run with him and protect his property, protect his flock, uh, his fucking produce, everything like that. You know, sure. Do some. And some nefarious things yeah. here and there, you know. And that was one thing that uh, Billy was known for was cattle rustling, yep. you know. And you see in the movie that they're herding a shit. Oh, wait, no, that was the second movie. Mm-hmm. The second movie. Ah, mm-hmm. Well, fuck it. But you see in the second movie that um, when he goes to see, when they go to see uh, Chisholm. Mm-hmm. Uh, fuck, played James Coburn. James Coburn. That's who it is. Yep. Oh, yeah, with the other two yeah, guys. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the two Mexicans. Two, yeah. two Mexicans. Two I, like, I like that little scene, work. by the way, and I love him. fifty for not taking any of that. <laughs> He's actually yeah. known to be in a lot of Westerns. I loved him in Maverick. Yeah, he, he was, was great, great in Maverick, fucking yeah. Maverick as uh, the uh, uh, Commodore. Uh, Commodore. Yeah. Um, but I, I enjoyed that little scene. It was only a small scene with him, too. I think it was only going like five minutes, mm-hmm. but I enjoyed that little standoff right there between the Mexicans and everything. Enjoyed that. Yep. Um, and you see where they, well, they owe, owe him, he owes them $500, uh, for like the two different things that he named, um, oh, for the Lincoln County war and not touching his, his herd. So, well, he's not going to pay him, you know? So what does he do? He does what he does best. Fucking rustles up some cattle yep. and goes <laughs> and sell it. And shit. <laughs> so each of these guys, the ones that we see, the only, the, just the ones that we see on camera, they're all like friggin' between 16 and 21 or 22 I think. yeah they're young i mean so, uh, in real life well even they even say in the movie that they're all under 21 yeah they're not they're not even none, of, none of these are over 21 is yeah. what, what well, one of the comments it, you make young guns too what was that uh there was that kid that was following them that was, was wanted 15, to be was yeah he was he was really young yeah i think he was probably the youngest one yeah. he was basically like a little child he was and he wanted to be like willie billy the kid willie the kid billy the kid i don't know why i said willie the kid <laughs> you're right I just got Billy and Willie mixed up. Jesus. <laughs> I really $13 like. $13 million. I really like Arkansas. <laughs> to make this movie. I like Rudabaugh. Arkansas Dave. Arkansas Dave Rudabaugh. Yes. Yeah. Especially when you said he was trying to make a name for himself. Have you ever heard of my name? You ever heard of it? It cost him. Yeah. It cost him at the end. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> See? You know, one thing you got to remember, it may be good to be famous, but it doesn't pay to be famous sometimes. Yep. yep. And he paid his head for it. <laughs> so. Yes. But he made it. He made it to old Mexico. He yep. did. He did. He did. Alone. He made it. His fight with Jose was great. Who? Jose. Who the hell is Jose? Who's Jose? Chavez? Oh, J-O-S-C is always, I thought, was Jose. It is, but, it who's, is, but who are you talking about? Who's, who's Jose? Uh, Lou Diamond Phillips. It's Chavez. Chavez. But no, it, it is Jose Chavez y Chavez. It's his full name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. It, it, I always heard it called it, Chavez. Yeah. yeah. But it is. <laughs> it, he is. Oh, I thought I was wrong here. I'm no, no. It is no. Jose yeah. Chavez y Chavez. Okay. No, but their yeah. little, little knife fight that they did, and then yeah. he's got the fucking knife just yeah. sticking in his middle of his arm. Mm-hmm. I thought that was interesting. Well, well, you know he why got they did it back, that. though. Huh? He got it back. He, he did. He did. He got his knife back. Do you, do you have why they did that? He broke his arm during filming. So to give a reason for his arm to be in a cast oh. for part of the filming, they stabbed him in the arm in the, in the movie just to cover ah. the fact that he broke his arm. Really? That yeah. is cool. I did yeah. not know that. He got, he got drugged by a horse. Um, when Amelia Estes shot, shot one of the guns, and it scared a horse, and it drug Lou Diamond Phillips. He, he broke his arm, and he had a couple other injuries. That's crazy. So he got, 
Yeah. No shit. Oh, he almost got hung. He had a noose around his neck. Like, and then when the horse was dragging him. No shit. Yeah, he said it almost killed him. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! Yeah, <laughs> he, he was. I, I actually enjoyed him in the movie a lot. Yeah. I liked him in both movies. Yeah, I, think that, I don't think they showed that scene anywhere in the movie with him being drug. But, no, uh, was, but I think they cut no, it briefly. They they did. Yeah. Um, I think when they were uh, going down escaping. the hill and he was being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, just a little bit when they were going down the hill. No, no. Mm-mm. Which part? When they were escaping towards the end, and everybody was scattering and shit like that. Chavez, they show him basically grabbing onto a horse as it's running away. And you see oh, him being okay, yeah. No, I remember what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. That may not have been the scene that it happened. Yeah, I don't know. That's a great fact. Thank you for yeah. bringing that up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did not know. Can't believe Emilio Estevez, almost Alec Baldwin, Lou Diamond Phillips. Yeah. That's fucking weird. <laughs> Without <laughs> even knowing it. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips, other than movies, the only movie I've seen him in is Stand By Me. I know he was in La Bampa, La La Bampa, La, Bump, La Bamba, La Bamba, the Richie Valens story. Yeah, but he was mm-hmm. also in Stand By or Stand Up, Stand and Deliver. Yeah, Stand, stand and, and deliver. deliver. And he's been a fuck ton of TV shows. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he's been in a lot of things. But what is he well known for? Stand and Deliver. Is that what he's mostly well known for? Or would you say? Uh, I would say the mo- the thing he's probably best see. known is La Bamba. Yeah, I would yeah. say um, because he's half Mexican, half Native American in this. Yeah, yes, his there's, character, the uh, Young Guns and Stand and Deliver. Uh, he was in Longmire TV show, uh, Prodigal Son. I don't. Prodigal yeah, Son. The Prodigal right. Son. Yeah, that's a, the the serial TV killer. Show. Show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Right, where he's the detective. Renegades. Yep. In eighty nine. Uh, so I say a lot Courage of Courage Under Fire. I do remember him being. Yeah, in yeah there. I do mm-hmm. remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Route six six six. I forgot about that one. <laughs> was he in the movie thirty uh, three? The thirty three. It's about the uh, miners that were uh, underneath the uh, uh, the miners that were stuck underneath uh, uh, Chile or something like that. Yes, he was. He was in that. Yes. I could have sworn he was in that. I remember him being in that. He's he's a lot older in that one. It's, uh, it's actually a decent movie. It's got Antonio Banderas. He's been in a bunch of stuff, but, but a he's more stuff. Too. But he's mainly known for TV shows from his, from what I've seen. Mm. No, he's done a lot, a lot of, of B movies. movies, a lot of B movies. Yeah, yeah. I wonder why he just never rose up to uh, stardom, like. The other actors in he it because they may not have wanted to. Because when you think about the other actors in these movies, you got probably probably the most top billing actor in this is probably uh Kiefer Sutherland, in my opinion. Emilio Estevez was like big in the eighties, early nineties, but then he kind of just faded up, faded off. But everybody they they cast at this time they weren't that big. No, they uh, were at see, this time. They, for they the were second one? No, for the first one. The no, even at the one, first one, they were already the start of the next big generation. No, when I read, when I read, they were like the the Western Brat Pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Brat-Pack, what I. That's Brat-Pack what I read. West. Yes. I mean, was, yeah, they were already established to be expected to be the next big generational stars. Yeah, when I mean, you got Martin Sheen's two kids, you know, starring in the film. Well, the same movie, the same year that this came out, uh, I think it was eighty eight. I believe uh, Wall Street came out. Too. Yep. And so you have, um, like I said, yeah, you, you got Charlie and Emilio. Um, Kiefer Sutherland, who uh, I know he just got off of uh, um, uh, Lost Boys, and there was also another couple, couple uh, other ones. What was the Flatline? Flatline, no, Flatline was Flatline. after. That, that was, was 1990s. That was after. Yeah, that was 90s. So he got off of Stand by Me, the and Lost Boys, Lost Boys, Lou Diamond Phillips, like you said, who was off of uh, Stand and Deliver. Stand and Deliver. Dermot Mulroney. What did uh, What did he do before then? Nothing. I, I don't. The other two, I really didn't see in many other movies. Uh, I'm just looking. I feel like Dermot Mulroney was in stuff before this, also. I think he got bigger after this. The that, second that one, might be. yeah, I think I've seen him a lot more stuff. Well, after the second this movie the had movie. a lot of actors that got into big stars, like yeah. Vigo and um, William Patterson. It, William Patterson's more of a TV actor, but he did a lot of great movies back in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. Manhunter, he's well known for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, there was a TV movie he did, The Beast, which is Peter Benchley's The Beast that I loved him in. Yeah, uh, CSI, CSI, of course. Breakwater, anyone but you, Ruthless, The Dirty South, uh, Dark Way Out. I don't know any of those. Secret movies. Invasion, Shooting Stars. Oh, oh shit! I didn't on, know um, the guy who played um, Charlie was also in Stand by Me. Apparently, oh really? Yeah. Which one, which one is that? Was that the that's Char- a sensitive the, one? Charlie the, the 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 boxer, the pugilist, the shorter one. The I, first, I don't know how else to yeah. I don't know how else to describe him. Which one was Dirty Steve or Dirty uh, Dermot Maloney? Yeah, that Maloney. Was, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. My best friend's wedding. Was Charlie uh, one of the one of Keith Sutherland's crew and Stand by Me? 
Possibly. He was in Scream 6, Shameless, Family Stone, Insidious Charlie was 3. also in Biloxi Blues. That's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, the Gray. He was what? in Back to the Future. Yeah. The Gray. The one with Liam Neeson? Yep. With the Wolves? Yes. It's a great movie. Station 19. I don't know that one. He was in Back to the Future Part 2 also. Who? I don't know. Um, the guy who played Charlie. Apparently, it was in Back to the Future and Back to the Future Part Two. You know, he was probably he was probably one of uh, one Biff's, Biff's, uh, Biff's, Biff's crew. Had to have been. Had to have been. Crew. That would make sense. Yeah, because Billy Zane was one of them. There, you don't yeah. know what the other two are. It's probably one of uh, Biff's crew. Yeah. And like I said, in Stand by Me. So this is a, a, a and Back to the Future Three. <laughs> All right, so he's a great <laughs> secondary <Yeah>. thug. <laughs> exactly. He's in two westerns right there. Yeah. Yeah. Which is funny when you hear uh, the score from. Uh, Young Guns too. You think a lot of uh, Back to the Future Part Three because that's a western. And there's a lot of this is, but I actually enjoy the music in Young Guns too. I think that Alan Silvestri did a great job on the western score on that. Yeah, uh, I'll talk about I that later in the show. Lot, I think he did a lot better the score in the second. Yeah, he was one of the first, the first score. Yeah. I did not care for when and first, he was one of Kiefer Sutherland's crew. Also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm saying <laughs> the beginning of the movie when it shows like the uh, almost like the black and white type where it's showing just the faces of each guy. Yeah, and uh, I didn't care for that in the music in the first movie. Oh no, that thing I did it wonderfully. I hated it. I didn't like the music at all. I thought the music sucked for the first one. I know they were trying to go more. It it just didn't fit for a western to me. It it had like that '80s. They t- try to put like guitar in there and make it yeah. a little rock and stuff like that, but. It just didn't work for me. In the second one, it worked. It worked great. It just seemed, but that was more of a '90s film. But for the first one, just not as much. I don't I like, know. I just I, I, think I like the for visual it. of the first one, beginning of it, like you're saying with the, yeah. with the, with yes. the black and white. But yeah, the music of it, the score of it was just bad. Yeah, but yeah, I thought it was fine because them trying to modernize, like they're, they're trying Doing to a profile, a modern, yeah. trying to profile all of them. So I understood where they were going from. Young, so they had the the template laid down, and then. John Bon Jovi comes in and knocks out fucking goddamn Young Guns 2 based on the template that they wanted. And then he came in and, like, perfected that shit for them. Right. Yeah. made it work. Yeah. yeah. No, it did. He did a uh, – he brought a a modern Western theme song yep. to what this – what I think it should have been. Yes. You know? Exactly. I mean, because – I mean, do you have the – are you going to go over the information of how Bon Jovi got involved – Okay, I don't have that. Oh, I thought you did. <laughs> no, I just, I just have the stuff on the score. I have the outro. This is for the oh, outro. See, I, the figured, I figured the music and scores, man. I'll start doing the research now. <laughs> I already, I already know. That's what I was, I, All right, I you know what? Then, well, well, yeah. we'll hit it off the stew on that part. I didn't yeah. do. I, I figured that you. I, I, I figured. I, was, I figured. No, you I, had I was going to play the song because I know the song was in the outro. I was going to have that playing during the outro, but I had no idea of <laughs> how he got involved. So I just do score. I don't do the the rock band. So they went to Bon Jovi, the band, yep. Bon Jovi, yeah. wanting to um, do the song uh, Want a Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive. Yes. All right. And John Bon Jovi, he's like, no, I don't want to I don't want to let you guys have that. But I want to write all the music for you guys myself because I'm spending off and doing my own thing. Yeah. Um, and they're like, what? He said, yeah, give me a give me like a day. All right. Yeah. And then, well, like a day later, he sends them everything damn near. Like, they're like, um. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Because he really wanted to. This was the time where he was stepping away from Bon Jovi the band to be John Bo- John Bon Jovi. Yeah. yeah. The 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 single Solo artist, artist soloist. Fucking love Bon Jovi. And the rest of the band got really pissed. They got really fucking pissed because because <laughs> well, he went solo. No, because they give him they, any they, credit. They they came to they wanted Bon Jovi. They wanted that song, so they lost out on. Money, right, and so like that because John Bon Jovi is like, no, fuck it, I want to do it solo. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you guys, I had everything like that. So the rest of the band got pissed. They got fucking pissed when they when they found out all about this because John didn't even talk to them about them being approached for the rights to their song. Well, other than the one song that really? they, he wrote, mm-hmm. for, other than the one yep. song that they wrote, what else did he write for the movie? Did he uh, wrote a, make a whole album? Uh, I believe so. Because yeah, yes. the the score is done by Alan Silvestri. Mm-hmm. He made an album. I have to check that out. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought he just wrote a, that song, nope. especially he one that wrote, plays no, in the credits. Got, he wrote. He wrote. Ed, you, he'll. You know. You'll know two of them. Yeah, that he that he did and shit. The uh, wanted dead or alive and another one. But that he also wrote a bunch of other music that wasn't in the movie, but it goes towards the movie. Yeah, which is I'm the soundtrack. Definitely gonna have to check that out. 
No, you you did that. I didn't do that part. Sorry. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. I, I knew that before. I didn't even do the research. This is something I'd known. Well, like I said, I, 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 never, <laughs> right. I never was big into these movies. Yeah. Watching, I gave him the rewatch. The second one was great, and then watching the first one for you know not ever seeing it before. It's it, it. I respect it more. I still just don't like. I still like the second one better, but I respect it more now that I finally got to watch it. So that's why I love about our shows mm-hmm. that we get to watch movies that we've never seen. So um, I just want to say. I knew more about the music of a movie than Ron did. <laughs> High five. Put that out there. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Why thumb- are you doing thumbs down? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying Suck th- it, bitch. I was saying thumbs down to me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> damn, I am losing my voice. Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting over this damn flu. Yeah, so, so supposedly the songs that he wrote, Billy Get Your Guns, mm-hmm. yeah. Bang a Drum, Santa Fe, and then, of course, Blaze of Glory, Dying Ain't Much of a Living. A fucking great song. Justice in the Barrel and You Really Got Me Now. We're all from, yep. from that soundtrack. Wow. See, I did not know that. I only thought it was a Blaze of Glory and Ooh. I just went by the score. So but they didn't they didn't play it in so it was a soundtrack made for the movie, but they weren't in the movie. Because the only one that you hear is Blaze of Blaze of Glory at the end of the movie in the outro. I mean you may I don't uh, know during, if you during hear, the credit sequence. I don't know if you hear any maybe vocal lists. Yeah, parts yeah. of it I, I, of other songs in there. Just the actual. There, there might be uh, visions of like parts of it, like during the score. Yeah, because sometimes a lot of composers will actually mix in, s- mix in, yeah. or they make their score sound like the song that they're playing or something like that. So there might be some of that. So now I actually want to go back and listen to that whole soundtrack and listen to all that music. I don't mind that at all because I love John Bon Jovi. John Bon Jovi. John John bon jo- bon jo- <laughs> My mind's going all over the fucking. Having place. a stroke, <laughs> apparently, man. I'm still trying to get over being sick. Fuck, sorry, dude. <laughs> fucking sicko <laughs> but you know the score though if we can talk about the score real quick first of all like i said the first score i didn't really care for but this is the uh, score right here yep it's a fucking great theme yeah Th- this is this actually i've never heard this theme because like i said i haven't seen it since i was a kid and now i got this score and i was like this is gonna be in my mix i love this but you see this how this sounds right here all right does that sound familiar to you? What, All right, what? listen to this. Yeah. Same composer. Uh-huh. Flight of the Navigator. Yeah. yeah. So he reused his theme yeah. in Young 100%, Guns. 100%. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lazy man watching, writing. I was watching. Fuck you. You got John Bell, Joey. Fine. Fuck. I'm going to redo this shit. Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching. <laughs> I was watching the movie. It's like, that sounds familiar. But I'm going to say the Young Guns 2 sounds better to me. It does. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, no, believe it or not, I actually like the Young Guns 2. This is actually... Yeah, a, but the Flight of the Navigator one fits... It does. ...for the movie. It yeah. does. Like, you could have put that one there in this movie and, yeah. like, vice versa. No, but, you know? but if, I had the, if I had the two samples right here... And I'm just want to listen to it for whatever oh, fucking reason. One, the, the exactly. Young Guns. Yeah, young Guns. Yeah, every day. Well, <laughs> yeah. this is a score right here. This is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Every single time that they, you know, the guys are riding the horses, mm-hmm. they're in the fucking desert and everything else, you just hear this theme. I'm like, this sounds like a Western. This is a very, like, modern-day Western score. I love this score. Like, I, I actually have this whole soundtrack now. I'm going to be listening to it a lot because I enjoyed it so much. There's a lot of great themes. And this is by Alan Silverstreet. There's yeah. even great drum themes that, that almost sound like Predator 2 mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But this is just beautiful. And then you got the big theme coming up over here. Fucking beautiful, man. Yeah. This is this is epic. This is very, you know, old school Western, but modern. It. I love it. This is a great score. So I, I, I have to give credit to this. I'm glad you brought me up to this movie now because now I have another score to, in my collection. You're welcome. So I enjoyed this one. <laughs> Being the score, this is this is something I enjoy. So perfect. You know, just like any movie, you know, the score and the theme um, really set the tone for, for how the movie is going to be and for really what the scenes are. You know, what he just played really, it really, really, really sets the scene for what is going on. Yeah. You know, what all the guys are actually going through and what's actually happening to mm-hmm. them, you know, and this, well, I mean, as much what? Billy, the kid is like taking them on this, like, you know, taking them with them and everything else. And they're going along with them and they're getting killed for him. Basically. I mean, the whole thing, 
Well, no, I'm not going to talk about it because that's the scene that you wanted to talk about later in the mm. clip and everything else. Because most of these guys, we are in the first movie, they lost two of the guys. Yeah, you think that you lose all of them because they all get shot up to hell before the end of the movie and stuff like that. And then you see most of them come back in the second movie. Uh, what? Who are the two that died in the first one? Charlie and uh, Dirty Steve. Charlie was the one that was like the sensitive dude that wanted to uh, that was laying with the. Charlie, uh, yeah, Charlie was the one that got uh, married. Mm -mm. And we got another one. Charlie Sheen's character. Yeah, Dick. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Dick is kind of forgettable. He wasn't in that long. He was kind of a dick. He dick. was. He was. <laughs> so, well, funny thing is, though, like, so those two characters, Dick and Billy in the film, were going at it all the fucking time, right? But in real life, though, like, Dick was the leader of that mm -hmm. unit. That's what it seemed like. And then when he got when he got killed, uh, Billy the Kid kind of took over. Yeah, because that that's that's his persona. Right. You know, but in real life, though, like there was no conflict between the two. Yeah. And shit like everyone knew Dick was in charge and Billy was fully on board with it. You know, the, the shit, there's not many pictures of Billy the Kid. There, uh, there's there's one only picture. one. I said, like I said, there's not many. They found a second one. Oh, they did. They have found a second one. Well, uh, okay. And the only one I did, they found and verified. It the only one legit. I've seen is him like standing it, around, it standing up. I mean, it, it went for auction, sold a bunch of fucking money too. Of like for, is it like, online? Because huh? I, the only one I saw online was the uh, yeah. one of him I standing heard of in front of a couple of years ago, like yeah, a poacher of it, basically. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of pictures of that, like they're all different renditions of uh -huh. it and stuff like that of his face. But that's the only one I could find because I trust me. After watching Young Guns too, I was on my phone, oh, looking up, doing all this history research about it and stuff like that, and couldn't find barely anything about him. I I read about what type of person he was, what type of kid he was, um, that he was very. Uh, well liked by the women. He was very good looking. A good looking kid at that time. Is is the one photo that is out there the one that he supposedly redid? In yeah, the with the rifle. Where yes. he gave it to. Yep. Yeah. Um, so wife. yeah. Him playing croquet. Is that legit? Yeah, hundred percent. No, hundred percent. I mean, they've got a bunch of prints out of it now. Like you buy this print from uh, Wally World and shit like Here, that. Does your phone turn sideways where it makes it bigger? Curious. I mean, I'm on Walmart, so it's not letting me. All right, I'll buy your Billy the Kid photo at Walmart, right? <laughs> oh no, they found more now. They found him playing poker. They found him um, as an actual nice portrait. Is it that same portrait? No, that's no, all over no, the no. It's a nice one. Sure, these aren't AI photos. No, <laughs> <laughs> it could be. There's so many fucking AI photos. Yeah. No, no, that looks just like that yeah. looks just like his Cleaned face. Up. In the yeah. Yeah. Picture. Well, it's funny because the the so the photo that they did in the movie was a direct reflection of the original one. Right, right. In the original photo, he is an ugly son of a bitch. Yeah, and shit. This like one. yes. Well, the reason why he's ugly, yeah. the way they took photos back then, there was no emotion. No. There was no emotion. No, there was no, no, like, they never smile. They always look no. so serious. No. But, like, I don't know. In that one, to me, it looks all fucking buck teeth, gnarled face. Yeah. You know, kind of uh, uh, hills have eyes a little bit. Hillbilly? You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. But well, that's weird, though, that they're actually finding more now. Well, no, if you see, if you see pictures like of him, I mean, th there is... Well, if you see pictures of Jesse James, uh, I mean, because yeah. he was well known to be okay. like a, a very good looking That's man. Funny. And if you look at his so fancy, is that really <laughs> him? Fancy boy. Yeah. There's a lot of photos of a lot of Western, like, uh, like I said, Jesse James, yeah. which uh, there, there's a couple photos of him, but he was well known as a very well attractive, you know, man that, you know, used to rob a lot of, he was kind of like the Robin Hood of the West, basically, you know, um, what was, what's some other ones that they were well known for? Like they were wanted, basically. I'm sorry. I'm looking up more photos of Billy the Kid. I'm 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 sorry. Now I'm going down the rabbit He's hole. The rabbit hole lost him. I knew about two, <laughs> and now <laughs> I've come across five other ones now, I and can't. they're all selling for like million bucks a piece and shit like that. And they're all being found at like garage sales for like two bucks or ten bucks and shit like that. It's fucking all insane. Right, look, I'm gonna take a picture of one of you guys. And like the old timeies, <laughs> I'm gonna say you're Billy the Kid. We're gonna. I mean, make, no, we're gonna make money off of this. Yeah. What the fuck is that? That's uh. Uh, Chavez. Oh, okay. That's the yeah. real Chavez. Jesus. Uh huh. Well, a lot older there. Yeah. Um. Okay. So yeah, here's the, you know, side by side from the photo, you know, to yeah, and like that to that another a fancy boy photo. Okay. Yeah, and you can tell it it is him. It is. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. He wasn't that bad looking. Mm. You know, he's a handsome guy. But I mean, the first photo does make him look like kind of Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, it's because when you look at him I think it's because on all the other pictures, you're like, okay. I know. think it's because of the quality of the photo. Wait. I think that actually takes a lot of it. Uh, that's what it looked like because there's a lot of uh, recreations of that photo that look even worse than what that what the original is. So I think it's just because of the creation, but also they don't put that much emotion into their pictures back then, so it makes them look all fucking no, they, weird. No, it's like they weren't you weren't allowed to. Yeah, you couldn't. You had to be very serious looking and stuff like that. Almost all the photos back during like Civil War times and stuff like that were like that, where you never see them smile and actually doing like a like a selfie or you know. No, I think it was. I think it was a thing if like you smiled and shit. Like, you were possessed. Like, the devil has taken over your body. That's fucking weird. And shit. Like, so, that's what they believed. Is that where the DMV gets it from? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the bottom? That's oh. why I just, when I get mine, I'm like, hee yeah. <laughs> You look at the bottom of the collection of all of them? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. that. The funny thing, so, the film really only took, like, roughly 40 days of filming. For the first one? Yeah. I can tell. There were some things that bothered me, but like it's what? just simple errors. Oh my god! Inside, this is near the end of the movie, but uh, the um, inside the uh, house of, is, that they set on fire, that they're mm-hmm. all doing the shootout scene. One of them bashes right against the chimney, and it leans. <laughs> it's a chimney, a brick chimney. The thing moves like it's because you know it's fake, but it's just one of those little simple errors that I caught in the movie. It's like that, that was. Kind of funny, to or see the chimney put together house, yeah, in a fucking rat shit fucking western town. I've never seen a chimney All move. Right. Like, I've never seen a chimney move like that. Seriously, they had different technology then. Yeah, man. It, way it, different now. It, it, they had better mortar now than they did with fucking mud and uh, straw and water. It's a simple or error. I mean, Plus, they were on the upstairs uh, when that happened. So thereby, you're gonna have more leverage than ah, at the base. Stand up. All right, that, that is mad. Okay. All right, defend it. Defend but, it. But uh, so the falsity for that. Was um that that house uh, McSweeney's house was a uh, was a two story house in the movie mm-hmm. real life it was a single single level house really and in the film they were there for a day maybe two you know and in reality it was uh it was like a week they were held up in there and shit that they were going against all of them out there for a week yeah oh damn yeah. I'm surprised they didn't set it on fire earlier. I mean, why it takes so long for them to set it on fire? And yeah, one, they had to get close enough to set it on fire. Okay. Um, was, and, and there's more than just six people in there. So Billy Kidd being thrown out into the fucking footlocker. That did not happen. Okay. I, I wanted. I was curious if that was in history or like that. They did, but just from the first floor. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of just pushed and rolled them out. They, they, yeah. they, they, they Surprise! The footlocker out says, yeah, there's a, why is that guy rolling out a footlocker? Uh-huh. Come Billy the Kid out shooting out. Please. <laughs> like, fuck my head. <laughs> what happened there was it actually landed on the top and he couldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> let me out. Let me out. <laughs> I want to know what McSweeney did to deserve that death. The only one without a gun that gets mowed down by a Gatling gun. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was just like, right? he's, he's holding a white flag and everything. And he just, went against the wrong <laughs> people. He went against the wrong side. <laughs> yeah. right. Oh, man. You can, you can see clearly, like, who was in charge oh, yeah. of that fucking town. Oh, yeah. You know? Pounds. I can tell you from a military standpoint, you bring out a, a piece of technology like the Gatling uh-huh. gun. You're going to find a reason to use right. the Gatling gun. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. That soldier's looking for any fucking reason just to open her up. Right. That's it. How fast right. do those uh, rounds go? The Gatling gun? Yeah. Those ones? For then, for that time frame, they were, it was fast. Okay. It was, it was, that was a very advanced piece of uh, weaponry then. Yeah. Now it's, I can shoot my pistol faster than that thing can go. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Like, they're not, what you saw in the movie and such was roughly about how fast it goes. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. Right, so they fired 6,000 rounds a minute. Um, it was slowed down in the movie. 308. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, how, wait a minute. How many not, rounds a minute? Not much, though. 6,000 rounds. It can fire 6,000 rounds. Yeah. It has the ability to fire 6,000 oh, rounds a minute. Okay. I mean, just like even our semi autos have the ability to faster more rounds per minute than we could realistically feed into them yeah you know um it it just has that ability doesn't mean you have the ability to make it happen yeah because you got to figure so those things there those gatling guns um were notorious for jamming i can see that i i've I've read about a lot of uh, guns like that yeah uh, 
I mean, even mini guns and stuff like that jam up all the time. Well, mini guns, def, uh, even modern day mini guns and shit would will jam up. Yeah, and it's a pain in the dick mm-hmm. to fucking clear those things. I think we, like, we actually we talked about that on our predator episode, I believe. Uh, I think so. Yeah, possibly those ones there were uh, were notorious because one, they're top fed, mm-hmm. and if everything isn't aligned in there just right, when you go and you're cranking the fucking handle as fast as you can fucking go, yeah, you know. And if it misses, it's going to fucking jam. Then you got to fucking pull out the fucking cartridge. Yeah. And then try and fucking clear it out and then fucking refeed and reload and all that other bullshit. Yep. So it's it's a great advancement of technolo- weaponry for that time frame. When they first came out, they sucked. Just for that reason there, they fucking jammed so goddamn much. You know, no matter how much you see in movies like uh, Last Samurai, when they're firing him in the final battle. Yeah. You know, I, I mm-hmm. completely forgot they were in that movie. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, they're, they're fucking cranking away and they're consistently fucking loading. Yep. And shit immediately without yep. a jam, which yep. that's a fucking lie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this one here, I think probably only shot a couple hundred rounds, maybe a few couple hundred, yeah. you know, and it was fine, which is about what it would do. So just enough to make sure that the one guy was dead. <laughs> <laughs> That was way overkill. <laughs> but like you said, you bring it out. You you right. need to fucking you. Yeah. You know what? It may have been his first time using that thing, yeah. and he got very excited yeah. about it. I would be do. Maybe it was Nowadays. like your first time jacking off. I, I fired many many a round through many many a firearm. If, have I had a chance to do a crank power g- uh, Gatling gun? No, I haven't. Would I be rock fucking hard while I did it? Yes, I <laughs> fucking would. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yep. So, like you brought up earlier, this final fight scene, Tom Cruise is actually in it. Yeah, I didn't and, know that. And you can sort of kind of see him in it. Yeah, because I got I to see if there's a picture because I did not see that in the movie at all. Do you see the side of his face or something? You got to remember, he's young Tom Cruise. 1988 young tom cruise I, I know it's not that because that's when cocktail came out that's when there's a lot of movie uh, uh shit he was in a lot Wait, of movies no. but it but, uh, but i thought he was in two or in one in one he is in one yes I thought tom cruise two. young guns i'm curious yep and emilio estevez on the opposite side fighting in the final battle too mm. yeah so he 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 had a day off from shooting so he was bored, so he went down to set and decided to fight on the other side <laughs> and shit. It's like a really quick scene. Yeah, yeah. He's got a he's got a mustache and everything. Yeah, he was, was it a cameo? Yeah, it's uncredited. Like he was there and shit, and he just asked if he can be on it. So they threw him in. It's pretty fucking he had awesome. Something to do with either director or somebody on set. He he had a working relationship with them on something else, and he was yeah. visiting them that day. Uh, and they were like, hey. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, other other director. I mean, other guys have done that where yeah. they just walk on and say, "Hey, yeah, I gotta do have a little scene in here." And says, "Oh yeah, sure, I'll get you a yeah. little scene." Yeah, that's pretty cool that he was in that. I did not realize that. Well, at that's all. like um, what movie? Storm. Uh, Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig and, and uh, Star Wars: uh, yeah. uh, uh, Last Jedi. Who else was in no, there? Um, um, Aaron Rodgers was. Um, it was another movie, and probably like I think. Three other mm-hmm. famous people were in were stormtroopers in uh, one of the Star Wars movies yep. and shit. So yeah. there was another movie that we talked to one of my episodes that I remember he asked to be in the movie and he gave him a small little part and I don't remember what the fuck it was. God damn! But that's a well known thing where you know they get a little bit part or a little cameo or even just you know doing something where you barely even see their face, but there it shows that they were in the movie still. So like Brad Pitt and Deadpool too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He did that for free, though. Yeah. Oh, that was, was a big so, role. Yeah. That was a oh, big yeah. role, okay? Yeah. That was a, that was a big I role. thought that was a fucking Photoshop picture at one point. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> realize it was actually him doing it. I thought they just Photoshopped <laughs> his face when I saw that. Yeah. That's like fucking uh, Channing Tatum. In, yep. Um, uh, this is the, the end. end. This is the end. Yeah. Oh, it's the fucking, uh, 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 the, um, the, uh, the bitch slave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the gimp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. No. Oh. The, uh, you know, what did you, what did you think of the POD scene in the first one? Goddamn chicken. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you see the size of that chicken? <laughs> I thought they did pretty fucking good. Yeah. From 
some some experiences. <laughs> <laughs> I, I especially Charlie just being up there and then doing the throw up yeah. and then just fucking acting like yeah, it's so good, I'm so good. Get her. That is a hundred percent accurate right there. You do get very sick, <laughs> or you can get very sick, and then you're you're still tripping even after you get fucking sick. Yep. Yeah, everything everything seemed right in the the. The audio slowdown feeling of oh, the they, world they got high, their voice was yeah. was right. Yeah. Every, everything, everything was really good. Everything was really good. I'm like, they're doing this really fucking well. <laughs> is this scene even, yeah, was this scene even like really well? Why did they put that scene in the movie though? Because Chavez was communicating with the spirit world. It yeah. just I, I don't know. It just seemed, they were lost. Very out of place. They weren't lost. They were screwed. They didn't know where they to go. Yeah. They were lost in the sense of they didn't know what to do yeah. anymore. Yeah, but Chavez was putting the war paint on and everything else, and you That's, know, he was communicating, he's yeah. communicating with the yeah. spirit. It's, world, a, it's so. a religious experience for them. Yeah. 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 So they, so he, nobody else knew what to do anymore at that point. Right. So. He's going to let his people talk to him. And that's how he figured out, like, they need to go west. I mean, California. Billy had other plans. And you can see in uh, the first one how he really has no plan for anything. He just really makes everything up on the fly and on the go. Yeah. You know? Um, but he's a really good uh, car salesman, though. He really is because he can sell his fucking idea. <laughs> Like that yeah. and make it fucking goddamn believable. Yep. You know? No, but these guys followed him no more. Where we yeah. Blackbird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> you name a trail after her? Nope. Nope. <laughs> I actually love that scene in the whorehouse and the young guns too, especially when they uh, try to hide and they take that uh, fucking uh, deputy and have them yep. murder the own, their own fucking deputy. <laughs> <laughs> that scene made me laugh. <laughs> No, that scene there in reality, what happened was Don't tell me that was real. Half real. Okay. Half real. So the lynch mob was there. And so you know how um the the whore, uh, the whorehouse was mm-hmm. uh blanking on the whore's name. Uh, I, I uh, had the actress Jane name. Brenworth or something. Good or, good something. Uh, God damn it. Great house, Jane. Great house. That's what it was. So it wasn't in in reality. It wasn't Jane. Great house. It was James. Great house and shit. Oh, wow, okay. So they change. They it's just little subtle things that they change around. You know, for the movie. Yeah. Um. But no, I'm that very scene, glad they showed Jane, not James, is walking around being <laughs> yes. on the horse. I mean, that was yeah. a, that was a great. Uh, yeah, it was. I love fuck it. you. I loved it. You know. <laughs> She didn't give a flying fuck, and she just got on the horse butt ass naked and oh, kissed my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Good for you." Which, by the way, this movie was PG thirteen. Do you think it's some weird saddles? It got away with a lot of nudity for a PG thirteen movie uh, because it showed her. I mean, her full back and everything else, but also with the Mexican uh, Mexican slut that uh, Willie the uh, Bill, Willie Billy the kid. I don't What's know why I keep saying Willie. I don't know why. Billy the Kid, damn, you think about all night. Dick. All, he, that's all he's done. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. And then in Mexico, when he's in bed with that chick, the chick's completely fully topless, and it shows everything. I was like, man, this is PG thirteen. This is stuff that would be the the first movie didn't even have this much compared to what this has. You can get away with a. I know that well, for a '90s movie, PG thirteen got away with a lot of stuff, but they don't mm-hmm. nowadays. It's because of historical accuracy. It was. It could be. Yeah. yeah, but you got to remember though, like you're allotted like X amount of things and X amount of time. Yeah. You know, right. so like you show, can, you show can her show, ass for a pretty good amount of time, and you I can show an ass all. for X amount of time, but you can't show bare tits for any longer than this amount of time. So that I think it's you can't show tits at all, and then you get appeals. Yeah, you can show tits very rarely. Sometimes they don't allow. I don't know. It's 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 very MPA is fucking They're, different every single the time. Board is weird. Yeah. So but because no. Titanic, uh, I think was got an R rating. When it first was, uh, uh, and that's he, because it killed a lot of people. No, but then they appealed it. That was a mass murder right there. But they appealed the it. Got a PG thirteen rating. Huh? It was. It was my and Kate Winslet murdered Leonardo DiCaprio directly. I know. I don't go back to that fucking. <laughs> fucking it's been bitch. proven. No. Yeah, it's James, been James, proven. James Cameron even did his own documentary about it. He actually did his whole little thing uh-huh. to mm-hmm. prove the whole idea. And uh, yeah, she she could have. 
both of them could have fit on She like fuck you. Yeah. Put him in. Put two little actors that in a fucking cold ass water and everything, and try. He actually did the whole reactment of what it would have been like back then. And yeah, they both could fit on, and he was proved wrong. Mm-hmm. So Leonardo you know, DiCaprio could have lived. Yeah, that rich bitch needed her leg room. <laughs> <laughs> fucking whore. Young guns to Titanic. What the fuck? So what happened was, uh, so they sent. I think it was James. The owner of the, the whorehouse, the place, yeah, as a bargaining negotiation, you know, as a safe passage or whatever, and the sheriff actually did go in and told him like, if I don't come out, if anything happens to me, shoot him. So nothing actually happened to him inside. So somebody outside accidentally shot inside and killed the deputy and or killed so, the sheriff. No, so the sheriff actually jumped. Through the fucking window. Oh Jesus! And that's when they shot him. Because that's, kind of, a, a that's <laughs> kind of a. He's like, this guy, the sheriff's not going to be coming out the window. We got to shoot this motherfucker. Oh shit! That's the sheriff. Yep. And yeah. now we got to run because <laughs> one of us just killed the yep. fucking sheriff. Yep. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Back down like Homer Simpson. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> we didn't do it. <laughs> Who was your favorite character in both movies? Okay, good. Ron. Uh, second movie. Pick one. Ruta, Ruta I liked. Uh, I I really enjoyed him. I enjoyed that he was you liked Arkansas Dave. Yes, I did. I enjoyed uh, Christian Slater's role, and then uh, Chavez in the first one. I really like Chavez. You just can't follow directions, can you? You said the first and second one. I said out of out of. He said out of both. Oh, out I of thought, both. I thought you said one out of each. No, my apologies. All right, then I would go with. I'll go with Chavez then. From both movies. Okay. When he died, I was just like, ah, man, I really enjoyed him. He was yeah. just one of my favorite characters and him uh, getting killed like that. But I also liked, I liked the whole dynamic between him and uh, Arkansas Dave because they had beef with each other. But then they were riding the horses together and helping each other out. So I really enjoyed their little, you know, thing. So Arkansas, look at it this way. Arkansas Dave is like Dirty Steve in the first one. Yes. Which uh, when I read online, a lot of people say that's a lot of people's favorite character in the original one is Dirty Steve. A lot of people like Dirty Steve. Yeah, yeah. I, he, I thought he was okay, but he wasn't anything special. I like Charlie better than I like Dirty Steve. Charlie, Charlie was the one that, as far as the secondary, yeah, guy like that. I thought Charlie was a more well-rounded character than Dirty Steve. So. Dirty yeah. Steve was, uh, he was, he was, he was very simpleton. Yeah, I, I think the chicken scene has got what everybody yeah. likes about yeah. Dirty Steve. Yeah. I really do. Well, Charlie, I love that fucking yeah, scene. That's, that's probably my favorite scene. Yeah, the but chicken scene. He was being so like weakly, like when they're in the the shootout scene at the end of the movie. Because he's then, not. No, no. But that's yeah. what I love about him is that he turns around and he says that he just comes out guns blaring. And he gets shot up to hell, but he he stood up. He got you know the uh, um uh, what's the word uh, courage. Cur- there you go, courage to go out there. And I I fucking loved how he just did a turnaround like that. So I did enjoy his character. He was a very sensitive type, though. You can tell by that, especially with him. Uh, in the whorehouse, and the girl says, you know, all I want to do is just... He's scared this entire fucking time. Yeah. He's also, he's not a, he's not a shooter, the yeah. way everybody else is not good with knives, the way, you know, that Navajo is. He's a pugilist, so he's used to one-on-one, up-close, personal, hailing business that, that way. Yeah. Not being potentially gunned down from a distance yeah. all the fucking time. Yeah. You know, but he's still continues on continues yeah. on he's scared shitless the entire fucking time but he continues on no matter what even after he me- meets that bitch marries that bitch who i'm don't even think they spoke the same language <laughs> at all and he's like no i still got to finish this right with the boys the entire time and chavez also in the uh, second movie with the uh the scene when he's down in the um the, the little prison pit with uh doc everything else and then that, that the whole scene right there is really just awesome when they break out of there and the guns but that that was a fun scene right there yeah. the whole uh breakout scene and uh everybody they're all riding away and stuff like that but no chavez he was my favorite character he was more serious character and i'm always a fan of the native american characters and i enjoyed him a lot i thought that he was really cool cool adam i like uh, william peterson as pat garrett in yes. the second one okay. I, I really the i the pat garrett in the first movie was just forgettable he was <laughs> he just barely he's very uh yeah but when when they put brought William Peterson on for Pat Gary, I think he was probably my favorite character. Yeah. Okay. So it was. I, I think he really rounded it out. Yeah, I, I think he did a. Uh, I think he did, I think he did a very good complimentary. Yeah. Job to uh, to Billy the Kid's character mm-hmm. in it. So yeah. Well, he, he was sort of the one where 
he let Billy the Kid go. That that was the whole little twist at the ending of Young Guns 2 is that he never killed Billy the Kid, that he kind of let him go because then it shows that little small scene where the funeral's happening and the coffin's... Somebody steals his horse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that that's already telling you, ah, okay, so he's still alive. So it was kind of giving it away, but nobody really actually knows. It's, you know, it's for the movie and stuff like that. Yeah, but... I think Chavez is in the uh, coffin. You think Chavez is in the coffin? That is... Do you know the actual why it's a possibility, like the actual story, though? No. Okay. No, that's just my thought. All right. Honestly. <laughs> All right. So Pat Garrett is hunting down Billy the Kid, just like the you know, story says. Comes and his up across book was a failure, into apparently. Into a town, uh, into this this building, late at night, middle of the fucking night. He goes into this building. He, he was told Billy's in there. Yes. A dude turns around. It's, a, it's dark and says something in Spanish, and Pat Garrett just blows him away. Thinking it's Billy. <laughs> or supposedly thinking it's uh, Billy. The other two people that were riding with Pat at the time had never seen Billy the Kid in their lives. Pat Garrett was the only one who had ever laid eyes on Billy the Kid of that group. Right. Uh, Takes them to a a doctor for the autopsy and the verification. The doctor has no idea what Billy the Kid looks like. All he has is a generalized description of height, you know, frame yeah. and stuff like that. And this his face is blown off. All right. So he's like, oh, yeah, this is definitely Billy the Kid, I guess. Uh, <laughs> very well. Could have been a random Mexican that yeah. they buried. And that's what the that's why it ballooned out there. Because there it was only Pat Garrett's word. Yes. Of that's it. Of, yeah. That was Billy the Kid that he killed. Well, nobody else ever ver- could verify it. Well, that whole book that he wrote where he had this uh, um, this press guy follow him around so he can write a book about his, his whole... Was his dad? In the movie. Somehow I missed that. I didn't get that that was his I dad. I didn't get that that was his dad. I thought it was. No, it was just yeah. some random dude from... That's what I thought. I, out I, east oh. who came out west to so, because he had breathing issues. Oh, I thought I thought. And he started a dad. newspaper. Yeah, because yeah, he, he, he told him that you're a drunk and everything else, but you yeah. can follow me as I on this journey to get oh. Billy, the kid, Billy the Kid. And oh, I heard wrong then. Yeah, so... It's a random journalist. He just oh. ran a printing press. Yeah. yeah. But apparently <laughs> at the end of the movie, at the titles just said that the book failed and it didn't go anywhere or something yeah. like that, so... Well, I think it was well before its time, and I, I no, will I will agree there with was, you. There I'm was plenty of Patterson, yeah, um, the dime short dime dime book novels, yeah, you know that totally hyped up the American West, like you know Buffalo Bill mm-hmm. or um, uh, all of them, yeah. the, the, all of them at that time frame. They all had these novels written, you know, these little trash pulp novels yeah. written about them hence why even the little kid who followed billy you know had that you know book the, you know the prince, prince of pistoliers because pistoliers. Pistoliers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those, those were one of those little fucking throwaway garbage fucking books yes. and so pat wanted to cash in on the time but nobody gave a fuck about that yeah. here <laughs> no i don't think he was i know they they uh they really tried to publicize him yeah just didn't to go be, anywhere to be this uh big name lawman to hunt down the kid yeah but i think you know i i, I honestly i mean a thousand dollars back then was a lot of fucking oh, fuck money yeah. oh yeah. yeah you know i mean that's hundreds of thousands of dollars now Shit, if, a, if a fucking like uh you know a well-known criminal saw that they had a wanted poster for a thousand dollars you'd be like oh i need more i mean because that, that's try to get top when there's like 300 or 500 and it goes up to a thousand. Oh, I need more than that. Yeah. And with the more hard there, the more respect they get because they knows that they're a very well-known criminal. But also the, the higher than interest it is because yeah. the more likely somebody Everyone's close to you is after turning yeah. you in. You know? I mean, prior to that, the only amount that they were asking for Billy kid was $200. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was only $200. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yep. So That's when you 200 see. to a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you see uh, in the first one, they're on the run. And they're at some fucking shack hut. And then you see Buckshot Bill or Buckshot uh, Roberts. Buckshot Roberts. Yep. That old fucker. That's God like, damn. 
That's my favorite character. Is it? That's yeah. my favorite character. <laughs> I fucking love Buck Tom the, Roberts. The old fucker that's got three minutes <laughs> yeah. of chewing time on scene. <laughs> he was fucking awesome. He was. He I was. loved him so much. He was. I've been waiting for this question. Yeah. <laughs> you, it's a fucking, you, I watched you the movie. I'm like, always. Yeah. Yes, I love this motherfucker right here. Yeah. You he was such characters. an asshole. You he was. Those seven characters. He was. Yes. Oh, I don't know. Fuck. I wouldn't say he was an asshole. I think he was just. He was just a very confident person yes. in his fucking abilities. Yes. And it really did fucking show what his abilities can do against his old abilities can do against six young yep. men, inexperienced men. Mm. And that's the thing, too. And even being cornered in a fucking, in a fucking shitter house. <laughs> yeah. All right. Being lit up still takes out dick. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Bam. Yep. All right, fucker. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he just knelt down and started shooting. Yeah. He didn't hide by anything, anything first. Nope. No, one day and started shooting. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. It's a ballsy old yeah, fucker uh, right there, listen, dude. That's why. That's my favorite character <laughs> yeah. of both fucking films. <laughs> so I can see, I can see why. I can really see why. I really do. I really that's do. That's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, uh, what other character yours? name do you know from a two minute scene out of both fucking movies? You almost had the fucking name. Yeah. Already. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's how much of an impact he made. Oh, I know. A two minute wow. fucking scene. Bam. You remember him. Yep. What's oh, yours? Yeah. It would be Chavez, honestly. Chavez. Mm-hmm. Like, he's like the sounding board. You know, he's the sounding person between, in both movies, that like is kind of the reasoning voice <laughs> of everything, you know? But. He's also a bad motherfucker, dude, that don't fuck with him. Oh, yeah. You know? That's what I love about him. Like, he's been, dude, he was shot, I think, two or three times in the first one. I think twice in the I second he got one. got killed in the first stabbed one. Stabbed through the fucking arm, which you've got two fucking, st- fucking bones in your goddamn forearm. I know. Yeah. All right? Now, you're either going on the uh, inside or... Or you're going in between the bones. Now it looked like it looked like he went in between in between yeah. the fucking bones. Yeah. yeah, you know, and he still just took it like a giant. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Chris That's and a like, motherfucker, yeah. dude. And they looked at him and said, "You want your knife back?" Yeah, yeah. in Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a funny thing. Yeah. Arkansas yeah. dance. All, I, all he did was get like a slit in the fucking stomach or something like that, or in the chest or something like that. His stomach, stomach, yeah. stomach slit. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I, I like. But well, you got to remember, like he's got, you know, probably about. Uh, one, two, probably about three layers of clothes. No, before you and it still went your... deep enough where it fucking hurt. Him. Oh yeah, yeah, it yeah, hurt him yeah. bad. Yeah, he was yeah. like, "Oh fuck!" All right, so no, that was that was a great fight scene. Yeah, that was a great fight. In scene. in real life though, Chavez, he was a dangerous son of a bitch. Yeah. He really was. What you saw in on camera was obviously it was very fucking tame, but <clears throat> like in reality, he killed multiple people and shit, multiple um. Um, on different occasions, and he could really give you a burn on your skin. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. He was actually sentenced to uh... <laughs> Indian burn. <laughs> oh my Especially god! Especially have hairy arms. Exactly. Oh, exactly. <laughs> oh. uh, he was actually he actually murdered. Uh, I don't remember how many people when he got the when he got life in prison. And then they, he, he got paroled at 11 years. So he didn't die like he did in the movie? No. So that was all completely made up for the movie? Yeah. Okay, I didn't he know He wasn't that. even there. Oh, okay. He was in Texas. All right, so they just added him to the movie just to be a part of, part of the whole it's game part of the again. movie. Okay. It's We're Hollywoodized. Back? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know what was what was real and what was not. I didn't know that he wasn't still there. So were none of them in... From the second, is the second movie completely made up? No, no. I mean, it's factual. There, there's some factual things, but not. It's factually fiction. Okay, just right. like the first one. Yeah. I think what he's asking is, did, did did Doc get dragged back into the cr- that? Yeah, time like frame. the whole crew all back um, together again. Yeah, but Chavez was not in there. He was there, but at the end. He didn't die from he, the, he didn't the gut die shot. from being shot. Yeah. Okay, he okay. was in Texas. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, they, they, they made it more. Um, I guess that drama effect to give it more drama and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So yeah. especially when Doc gets it killed, it gives you. A, um, it makes you feel. Yeah, you know, it makes you feel for the character and such. So the one thing that we really haven't really fucking talked about is Billy the Kid. 
that much. Oh, we Billy. Talk, we've really talked about Billy. everyone else. When he's really kind of the main character of these movies, when you yeah. think about it, because he's kind of he's the leader of the pack. What do you mean when you think about it? He's absolutely yeah, yeah, right. the yeah. main character. Yeah. Of the movie. yeah, he's the leader of the pack. But, but, but think, but think I, about this though. It's a great that, ensemble cast, though. Yeah, yeah, if you can talk more about the the rest of the characters, yeah, right, like that shows how on point I think they did with casting yeah. the rest of these people yeah, for it. And the thing, of, the thing about Emilio is that he grew on me. Because in the beginning, when I first watched this movie, I was just like, eh, I remember he's okay. That. He's okay. But then, then throughout the movie to the end, and then his laugh was kind of annoying me. And then to the point, I was like, you know, that's really fitting his character really well. Because that, that was the thing that he did a lot. He always just did that, you know, that wild uh -huh. laugh right after he uh, tried to make a, something funny or something like that. And then the second one, I, I enjoyed his character even more. He's more serious. I enjoyed him as Billy the Kid. Yeah. Like, I, I respected him more watching the movies. But when I was first started watching, I was like, I'm not a fan of him. I was like, why did they fucking cast him to do this? Harley couldn't stand him. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. She could not stand him. Um, she came in and started. Uh, Emilio? Or yeah, the Emilio. Or, oh, okay. Emilio! Yeah. <laughs> um, and I had already finished the first one. I was probably about a quarter of the way into the second one. And she came in and started watching uh, with me. And she's like, man, I. I couldn't fucking stand him in these movies. I really fucking couldn't. He's such a shitty fucking actor. I'm like, oh damn! All right, <laughs> he played a good. Fucking good are we watching the same movie? I know. That's what I was like. All right. He played a All good right, like sweetheart. kid, like a wild kid type of character. I think he actually pulled it off really well. Yeah. No, I I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, I, I was just caught by surprise, like the visceralness <laughs> that Harley did not care for him in any way. I'm like, oh, all right. Well, she also didn't. She also <laughs> didn't right. like the Breakfast Club either. <laughs> I don't remember that, but okay. Yeah, you even was like, yeah, she gave a bad review for Breakfast Club. Oh, that's right. That's right. I remember. I remember. And you were like, yeah, I'm going to have to talk with her when I get home. <laughs> you even said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking weird. Um, oh, they tore that movie apart, especially your wife. Yeah. Your wife tore that movie oh, yeah, apart. I know. I know. Ruined it for Sammy. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, she, so as a mom, she, for fuck's sakes, she looks at movies differently now. Oh, I know. You know, I know. especially with having teenagers now. Yep. You know. Um. Yeah, she looks at movies like that. Like she loved the, she enjoyed the shit out of the fucking That's what movie she said. before. She yeah. said that in the review. But, but yeah, you know, then as it changed. the mom of a fucking it bothered her how Judd Nelson treated yeah uh, Molly Ringwald and things yep. like that because how young she was. Yeah, I remember listening to the episode. Yeah, and that was what really bothered. He was her. a real fucking dick. Yeah, yep, to her. So, but um, yeah. So you see in the check out BAC by the way. There you go. <laughs> yeah, go check out their uh, Breakfast hey. Club edition, and you'll and you'll know exactly what we're talking. about. Yeah, their about. Breakfast Club episode definitely worth listening. Sammy hosted that one, and uh, you'll you'll see the changes in that episode of people liking and not liking the movie. So Ron's trying to avoid getting punched again. Uh huh. Hey, I'm <laughs> oh yeah, I, I don't care. I, I think Breakfast Club was a good movie. I I, I love it. I like the movie. <laughs> I think yeah, it's yeah. a great movie. Yeah. The, the greatest. In scene ever, <laughs> so I got exactly. it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I like when you both just did it right on an audible fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, visually did it, <laughs> but well, everybody, we got Patreon. everybody has seen it and knew immediately yeah. what you did. Exactly, yeah, great fucking. You should know it. <laughs> Don't forget about me. Don't you forget, forget about me? me. Yeah, you, know, you see in the movie with Billy how he. You see in the, in the opening of the first one, you know, you see him running through uh, town, escape, yeah. escaping, you know, uh, Murphy's, yeah, Murphy's pig, I think he was also like in the pig's feet or pig's. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, what's it called when the, where, where the pigs go? The pig pen. Pig pen. Pig pen. Thank you. I was trying to think of the word. Yep. You see him there and, uh, you know, you see Tunstall and Doc roll up on him and shit. Tell him to get in the back of the fucking wagon and whatnots. Yeah. Um, and Doc was about to get a fucking nice shot of whiskey and fucking then they had to save this little asshole and, <laughs> uh -huh. and roll out of town and said, yep, fucker. You yep. said you liked Doc in this movie compared to the second movie. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I he, was he was weaker in the second movie. Much weaker in the second oh, one. Yeah. Much more of a whiny little bitch in yeah. the second one. He movie. got very, um, well, he was a poet in the first one. Like, he still, I mean, yeah, he, he, still, he was in the first and second one. He saw a soft spot. Absolutely. But he wasn't a whiny little fucking bitch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because he didn't have anything in yeah. the first one. You know? Well, I guess, yeah. In the second one, he had, you know, wife and kids yeah. and a teaching job. 
So, but it's funny that like af- years after, you know, you see him rounding everybody up that's involved in this shit, and they go all the way up to fucking New York to go get him. And I think we talked about it earlier of uh, him going, tr- being dragged from New York all the way over to fucking New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where ba- really, really was where both films are filmed, the entire thing. And um, New Mexico? Yeah. 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 And you see that uh, he gets thrown in the fucking pit. And um, Chavez. Chavez is already in there basically fucking waiting. And it's funny because nobody fucks with him. But everybody fu- tries to kill Doc as soon as he gets yeah, in Yeah, I remember seeing hole. that. <laughs> That's you what know? I love about Chavez because he's a tough guy. He is. He's, he's, he's a, a fucking tough badass. Dude. Yes, he was. Um, you know, and then you see that uh, Billy and Pat and Dave. Uh, that was it. Yeah. That was all of them. Yeah. Was it just no, what, three of them. Was it Arkansas? Arkansas Dave. Dave. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Your favorite character? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I, I just <laughs> call him Rudabaugh. <laughs> he has a name. Arkansas Dave, Dave Rudabaugh, who was not from Arkansas. No. Yeah. He was actually from Texas? Ohio. What? I think. I think really? that's where he is from. Originally, yeah. What years does these take place? Ohio Dave Rudabaugh just doesn't sound scary. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> what years does these take place? About uh, 18, 18, 80s, 70s? 1870s. Okay. I think 1870s, yeah. 1880s, I think it was. Because the Old West was mainly around the 1800s, like early 1800s to um, 1900s, isn't it? Mm, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Uh, before and after the Civil War. Yes. So then you get... Uh, then you get introduced to um, Lynch Mob, <laughs> which, which is funny because in there, there's a lot of movies that that have Lynch Mobs in it, and this this one and another one that we did recently um, are yes. very very funny. They're Django very, Unchained, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, when they're when the Lynch Mob is just standard, I can't see fucking shit out this thing. Um, they both. I mean, that's exactly rewatching it. What popped my yeah, head? Exactly. Yeah, how, exactly. How regular these people were not these big overarching villains. They're yeah. just regular fucking assholes and yeah. socks over their heads. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, pillowcases that the dude's wife fucking cut out. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, but they weren't um, doing it for racial reasons this time. No, they weren't. No, no, they were doing it for uh, criminal justice because oh, they don't tolerate scum. Exactly. And their definition of scum, I think, sometimes yeah. is is very misconstrued, though. Yeah. yeah, you know. And you see, you know, they're they're coming through, and they f- figure out that Doc and Chavez are in there. And uh, you see how freaking Doc's trying to barter his his way out. You know, like he's got he had nothing to do with him, and the the Indian is my guide, and blah blah blah. And then and then all of a sudden, you hear the laugh. Of uh, fucking Billy, Billy the Kid, and then it's just oh great! I thought I got rid of you. <laughs> I, thought, I literally thought I left you behind years ago, you know, ten years ago and such. And uh, nope, you're fucking here again. Great, you know, you're dragging my ass back into this fucking shithole. Yep, you know that I left behind. And but the the funny thing, like he's very charismatic though. He really is. He he finds a way to keep everyone together. You know, like in the first one where he's uh, Chavez is trying to leave, you know, and he's telling him that, you know, like after Chavez is telling him about uh, uh, fuck, what was it? Uh, Red River? I think it was. Um, about the massacre that happened there of his people. Yeah, no, shit. I remember that when he was going, when he was like going all off about that, about yeah. his uh, losing all of his family and everything. Yep, and you see how he kind of twists and turns it around and tells him like, "Well, we're we're your family now, you know, and we are what you have, so you you can't leave." This shit, and you see how he's he's very he's got a very silver tongue, you know, and. How he's very charismatic with his words to really fucking manipulate and mm-hmm. get people to stay and change their minds yeah. on what they really want to do. You know, because I think a lot of people, a lot of them really didn't know what they wanted to do. But with him, 
he had no fucking clue on what he was ever going to do. Yeah. He knew, he just knew that he wanted to keep these group of men around him mm-hmm. because he didn't have anything else. He didn't have anybody mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to be around, you right. know. He was always on the run. He was actually he was actually with another gang uh prior to before this one. I, I don't remember exactly what happened with that one. Was that in the movie? No, it's not in the movie. This is something in, in history. real life. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, pe- people people are always trying to hunt him down because I remember that scene inside the uh the saloon um uh with that other guy that was talking to the uh the whore and uh-huh. talking about how he's trying to so what do you what are you doing? He says, I'm on now Billy the Kid and then shows him the gun and gives him the cut and everything else. I thought that was a great fucking scene. Oh, it was. That was a very that was a funny scene. That shows his cockiness. Yeah. You know? And for him being uh in real life, you know, uh maybe 17, 18 years old, I think. You know, young and dumb and cocky. Mm-hmm. It shows and it really in that scene there. Yeah. Um, especially since nobody and he said it right too, you know, it was like before earlier, is that nobody knew what he looked like. You know, nobody yeah. had any fucking clue except that he's a young good looking man he likes to whistle a certain tune little show tune or whatever it is um and he's left-handed which he's not left-handed he's right-handed he's right-handed so in that picture okay the famous the one famous picture of him you see how it's um it's fucking it's uh bleh, fuck reversed there we go jesus All right so it looks like it's his left but he's actually right he's right-handed, right-handed. yeah so that's why everyone always thinks that he's left-handed. Ow. So that picture worked for his advantage, basically. A little bit. Well, on See, the I wanted like posters, his... on the wanted posters, did they have that picture or did they have uh, the... hand-drawn? Uh, it depends on the what one, the, the, the poster. And like some of the posters most did have, were... but most were drawn, yeah. hand-drawn. Yeah. Um, but I thought <coughs> they were implying that they got the left-handedness from when they were confusing some of Dick's. Uh, you know, information and assuming it was Billy's information, like they were talking about, you know, being leader of the game, they had his picture, yeah, you know, uh, you know in the place of uh, Billy Kid. I think Dick was left handed, he may uh, have been. So, I think that misinformation in the became, movie, yeah, okay, in the movie, yeah, but in real life, they went by that picture. Oh, okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. So, in, in the picture, you know, everything is flipped, yeah, you know, um. So that's how they. That's why they thought he was left-handed. So in the opening of the second one, you see, well, he's gonna get what a uh, hundred dobies for his trigger finger. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. So he goes for his fucking left hand. Yep. But he pulls out on his right. <laughs> so, uh, but he was both. He they showed him firing. Oh yeah, he yeah. Well, yeah, two with guns. both hands. He yep. was ambidextrous. Yeah. So, you know, and you see uh, in. What I like about it is you see in the first one how he is, right? He's very gung-ho, and he doesn't... He's like Dave in the second one, Hmm. wanting to be in charge and run everything. Yes. Okay? And he's... And you see that, and it progresses through to the second one, and you'll in this scene here... It shows how he actually flips a little bit his uh, his demeanor and matures, um, yeah, a little bit more, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it shows that like he really has never has ever had a fucking plan for anything. He has just gone on the whim of whatever feels right. Mm-hmm. Spent a lot of nights in this cabin after the Lincoln War. Tried to put another outfit together, but uh, that's never the same. When you boys came back, I felt like there was nothing I wouldn't do to keep a gang together. Keep riding. What are you saying, Chibato? You know what the Mexican blackbird is? It's a broken trail. It leads to old Mexico. It's a half black, half Mexican whore. Up in Puerto de Luna. So you mean uh, 
You named the trail after her, right? There is no trail, is there, Billy? Is there? What about old Mexico you promised us? I'd be just another gringo in old Mexico. It's the same as being dead. You're starting to believe what they're writing about you, aren't you? Let me tell you what you really are. You wrote a 15-year-old boy straight into his grave. And the rest of us, straight to hell. <laughs> straight to hell. Bonnie, you are not a god. Why don't you pull the trigger and find out? out first. Well, Andrew William French, you never killed nobody. They ain't gonna shoot at you. Go to hell. They shot Tommy. Somebody's gotta do it. Jesus, there must be at least ten of them out there. Get me up. Dave, it's your gang. What? It's your gang. You lead us out. Come on. It's my gang. It's your gang. It's always been your gang. Don't cross me, Dave. Billy! Let's finish the game. What I love about that is you see him actually opening up to him saying that he's he's never he he doesn't come out outright and say it, but he basically that he's never had a fucking plan for anything, you know. He he's going as what's what's that word? Uh, the, the phrase is that he's just I don't know how to say him. It. Yeah, is it's where he's just letting life take him? Just let just going on going for the road or yeah. i don't know how to say it you know what i'm talking about going right going with the flow so, yes yeah, something like that basically where he it's just he doesn't have a plan he just keeps going yeah and whatever goes in his whatever if something comes to his plate it changes his whole outright what he's going to do and he's got this crew with him but he's trying to keep them all together with him and everything else and yeah. taking him along for the ride basically yeah so and you see how he he admits openly admits that he going to old mexico he would just be another fucking gringo down there. Yeah. You know, so staying here to him is his better option because where he was staying, he has people there who like him and would protect him being there in old Mexico. He has nothing. So he's better. He'd be dead there no matter what. I took it a different way. I took it at him saying just another old gringo down there. He likes being Billy the kid. He oh, he likes- absolutely loves it. It, he, that's what he thrives on is the attention that he likes to be famous and if he goes to uh, down to old mexico he's not gonna be billy kid anymore he's just some old gringo uh and just he, like uh arkansas dave but yeah they, they knew arkansas dave yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i guarantee you they knew billy yeah. the kid if he yeah. went down there yeah, yeah. but he, but if he went down there he wouldn't be going down there as billy the kid he'd be going down there as a, some old gringo yep um in order to stay alive yeah uh so and he could not stand that idea. Yeah. He could not stand which I. So the fact that implied that after Billy died, quote unquote, um, he then spent the next several decades as the gringo somebody and, else, yeah. uh, and you knew that had to drive him insane. Yeah. All right, just having to be another Joe Schmo, uh, and to hide his image of yeah. Billy the Kid. Yep. Mm-hmm. But he 
wish that he was what he was because that he, he enjoyed being famous. He enjoyed the attention of being Billy the Kid. Yeah. But being that he's just gonna be hunted down and killed, mm -hmm. so he had to hide away. Man, see that it, it makes you wonder if you actually really did survive, and that was that old man was really him, because there's there's there isn't any proof. It, so that's a good question. What do you believe? Do you believe that's him, or do you believe that he actually died? My gut tells me he died. Um, you think it was a hoax? Yeah, uh, yeah, I do. Okay. Um, but I do love the idea that he made it out okay. and everything like that but also i i the reason i my gut tells me he died is because i do not see how much of an attention whore the real billy the kid was mm -hmm. him actually being able to hang it up uh and stay the last basically. couple of years with life I, yeah. I don't see him being able to do that uh, going i going to an early retirement basically yeah I yeah. don't see him being able to do that and just becoming a regular guy. Um, even after everything that happened, that wasn't Billy the Kid's style in any way, shape, or form. He yeah. he needed that that fame, that attention that came with that. He always, you know, you could tell because at such a young age, starting to be a badass and stuff like that, and then just riding that badass the entire fucking time. Yeah, I just can't see him not ever popping out in the next 30, 40, 50 years, however long it fucking was. Um, just popping out and just saying "fuck this," I'm Billy the goddamn kid, yeah. all right, and just going buck wild. I don't know because right there at the end, though, it, it's almost like you saw in his face that things were shutting down. Um, yeah, his essentially his family was gone now. You know, he the the regulators were his family; they're all gone now, and you can almost see in his face when Pat well, they were was, already was getting ready to 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 shoot him yeah. that. He would, you know, he was ready to, he was ready to die. But they His, were already but, gone for those couple of years, however long it was, um, after the Lincoln County, uh, you know, war, uh, until they got dragged back and stuff like that. He was already out there still tr being yes, but badass they dead. Billy. He, he knew they were out there, yeah. but they weren't dead. Now they're dead. So he knows that they're not coming back. No, no, and not. It, it, in, in his eyes there at the end, it was almost like he realized things are done. And maybe because of that, he was able to just shut down and maybe. just well, do you, do you, go off as a hermit. Do you believe it was a hoax? The only reason I'm wondering if it wasn't is because when the old guy came back, it was supposed to be written right at 1950. 1948 is, is when he first started talking about he died in 1950. Right. So the details that he knew were all of the details that he knew common knowledge? Uh, no, no. Or did no. he have any details? He that had other enough know? details that it would have had to have been somebody really close to the inside to be able to give all the knowledge. Because, right. you know, they had like. These people knew this information. These people knew this information. Not many people knew all the all information. It. So either A, he did a fuck ton of research um, before he decided to come out of this and did a lot of interviews with a lot of people and shit like that. No, I heard he died. Or, he died like really as soon as he came out about it. He 27 died. days after meeting with the yeah. governor. Yeah. No, right. no, he would. No, for two years. Was though, it two years? Yeah. He was in, in real life. He was uh, telling the story for two years. Oh, okay. Before he did actually truly meet with the governor. Okay. Um, okay. In I 1950 and then died right. less than a month after he met with the governor. Right. So um, if it was 1950. The movies took place, what would we say, in 1870s? 1870s? Yeah. yeah. So in 1948, 1950, this dude had to have been almost 100 years old. 70 to 40? We talking, you're talking 50? 50, 50, 60, 70, you're talking 80, 70, so that's about eight, 90, between 90 you're and talk, You're talking 80 years there. He was almost 20 when the okay. movie happened, he so that's was, another 20 years. Billy the Kid was born in 1859. Okay. Um, so uh, he was 90, approximately yeah, 90 years 90, old. Yeah. yeah. Why well, would a ninety-year-old old fart in the forties or forties, late fifties want to portray a hoax at that age? I mean, to me, it, to it's there if you're other do something stories, like that, unless he was absolutely. There insane. were other stories that he <sighs> yeah. he he was known that uh, that Bushy whatever the Bushy name was, Bill yeah was known was he Bushy to, Bill Roberts yeah to yeah. be kind of a scam artist you know in in his later years and then he came out like hey i'm billy the kid and people were like really 
<laughs> he even so, tried to scam us a whole bunch of stuff, which would, would fit with Billy would the fit Kid. Billy, yeah, it would exactly. fit with Billy the Kid, but then also, this is a guy who's a known scam artist now trying to pull what could be the ultimate scam at the end of his life and just for fame and notoriety. And if 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 you're that old, you don't have a nest egg, but you know, I can tell you a story that I'm Billy the Kid. You're buying me a beer, aren't you? You're buying me fucking yeah. dinner. You want to hear this fucking story. Oh, you're paying for my fucking room. Yeah. I mean, it's it's something that he could ride that potential story yeah. until his deathbed. Okay. So it's a possibility. So it, yeah. So it, it, it's there's a 50-50 chance. It, it's yeah. just. What do you think? <sighs> it's kind of a fucking toss-up. Um. I believe 50 50. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm agreeance with you because I, I can't really. It seems like it's real, but it's also doesn't. It seems like it also could be a hoax, too. So you're kind of like on the fence line. You really do not know. So I, it's hard it to answer. Very well, could be real. Yeah. You know, especially giving like there's several accounts that corroborate his story and test statements. Yeah. yeah. Testament. Test, testimony. Testimony. Thank you. You know, um, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if it was him, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't. Yeah, you know, like I would like to think it is him, you know, because he didn't have anything else to fucking live for. No, yeah. you know, all of his friends are fucking, gone. All of his pals are his family. dead. Right now, you know, and he doesn't have anybody else, and he's a wanted man. Um, but was a wanted man so if pat garrett didn't shoot him and in the movie he actually shot that fucking clay pinata right that's what everyone scattered for when you see the you hear the gunshot and the clay pot shatters um you know and he told him fucking run off and they took chavez put him in the coffin you know and he takes his horse and fucking rise off into the sunset for what 80 years 70 60, 70 80 years. fucking years you know he knows he's on his deathbed so he knows he's dying he just doesn't know when now when he when bushy bill roberts comes about um so you know he i think the reason he came up uh was to i think clear his conscience and to actually die pardoned instead of dying an outlaw yeah right you know because i think in his mind even though he's still alive but if everyone thinks he's dead he's still an outlaw yeah you know and like if that's the way you're gonna live for what 70 80 fucking years later or 60 or 70 years you know you're you you don't sleep well (laughs) that night yeah you know it doesn't matter what name you change yourself to shit so um, what was your favorite scene in out of both movies? No, it's gonna be in the second one. Um, Elron. I'd say my favorite scene. I, I really enjoyed the fight scene between uh, Arkansas and um, Chavez. Uh, the uh, little knife fight that they did, but I thought that the um the breakout scene and the uh when um Doc and Chavez are down inside the pit, <sighs> that whole scene was just. God, God, there's a lot of good scenes in this movie, so it's kind of hard because I also like the horse scene, the um, the whorehouse scene when they get the deputy with the guys to the horse and the whorehouse. E- <laughs> what the fuck? No, the ho- is that what I said? You, see, you said the horse, the whorehouse. Okay, the whorehouse scene when they get the deputy, the guys to shoot their own deputy. Yeah, uh, you know what? I'll pick that scene because that scene was kind of funny, and then the whore coming out all butt ass naked and not even giving a fuck and uh, riding off she had a nice ass yeah i i will say <laughs> that was a great scene because i it was smart you know getting the deputy to come right back at that, that, we shot <laughs> we murdered our own deputy yep that that scene right there but yeah. um you see chavez though uh not God. knowing like are you really gonna fucking drag me out and throw me out there the fucking bulls, <laughs> right no, but I thought that was the funny part is because uh billy the kid was like oh yeah we got it right here go ahead and take him and I thought that was, it, it was a it was funny and it was you no know, it, it was amusing funny scene so because there, there were funny scenes in this movie and then there was some good drama scenes in this movie but um yeah there's a lot of scenes i i really really enjoyed this movie yeah this good. one was fun this one I, I i was actually glued to the tv and enjoying this one so that's it's a good one but adam uh, the 
Peyote scene. I just can't. <laughs> I just can't get over the chicken. <laughs> you see the size of that you chicken? See the size of that chicken? <laughs> I just can't get over that. <laughs> uh, that was a fucking. That was a good scene too. It was. And that was actually uh, so since when they were filming, um, peyote was uh, illegal um, for them. So it was the only thing they when they're passing around the cup is just mushroom uh, mushroom tea. Oh jeez, and shit. Oh. So yeah, <laughs> mushroom tea, which isn't bad. Like I've got. Uh, CBD mushroom tea. I've Shit. never had mushroom tea. Yeah, so it's fine. Stu, you've had mushroom tea before? Yes. Sure, you've had shrooms too. I've had shroom yeah. tea also. Psilocybin <laughs> <yes. laughs> <laughs> tea? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. It's very good. Not very. No. Taste wise, tastes like fucking that shit. <laughs> I don't say taste wise. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> So, uh, still, what's your favorite? Oh, I already said it. You know, Buckshot Roberts. Same Buckshot one. Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. That's same same same. Yeah. Favorite character and favorite scene. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it kind of has to be my favorite scene just because of how memorable the character was. It just just for the short me. amount of time yeah. that he was screened. Yeah, right there. It, it, that whole thing fucking played perfect. He's like, oh, we got a, we got a warrant for your arrest. Oh, man. That, I, that's not for me anymore. I don't ride with him anymore. No. I'm here to collect <laughs> a fucking bounty on Billy the Kid. And it, the rest of you, I yep. guess. You're not worth as much, but fuck yep. it. I'll take you a half. Well, it's funny. It was, party. it was $200 for the kid. Yeah. And it was 110. like 110, 110, yeah, for, 110 everybody else. for everyone else. Yeah. Like, that's fuck, dude. I mean, look, yeah. I know it's $90 less, but still. Yeah. Unless it was 110, 110 for everybody. For all everyone, everyone yeah. else. Yeah. 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 That, well, that's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I just thought that was such a memorable fucking scene, the way the whole fucking thing yeah. played out. It, it it fit so well. It came, made them come together. It also, I remember seeing it the first time, because I already knew when I was first watching it, you know, Emilio and Charlie Sheen and their brothers. Like, oh, cool, they're making a movie together. Brothers, yeah. You know, and they're going to be badass yep. and shit like that. And then I was not expecting fucking Charlie just to fucking bite the goddamn bullet right there. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> All right. All right. I think he, he was actually more top of the uh, top build uh, actor compared to uh, Emilio. Yeah. Emilio was big in the eighties and a little, like, I think other than what are the movies we it you know, he was in, uh, uh, fuck the, uh, Ma- maximum, no maximum overdrive. Yep. Oh, that was a good movie. Yeah, he was in that, though. That was a stupid, stupid fucking horrible record. movie, but fucking fun as shit. That's one of those stupid movies. See, I got another one on my list. I'm already coming over with my top ten part two. <laughs> That's a bad movie that I love. That's not a bad movie. That's a fun movie. It's a, it's That's a, a bad, bad movie. movie. <laughs> it is a bad movie. I know, but. Very cool. They, they found the truck they, recently. They found the fucking truck. Oh, I saw that. No, the, the yeah. front of the truck, they, they uh, take it all over the... Uh, to uh, conventions and everything. No, that's a um, a remake. They found the fucking truck. No, they f- yeah, no, they it's not a remake. They redid it, but it's the it's the original because they found it in a ditch. The, yeah, okay. uh, the, oh, the yeah. Green Goblin. Okay. Yeah, I, no, I, okay, I didn't know. Yeah, because okay, I, okay. I, I, I have the Blu-ray yeah. and they actually have a whole thing about it where they found it and they redid it. And yeah, they that's what I'm saying. They, they found people get the pictures truck. with. It. I would love to get a picture. Yeah, with I don't that think thing. they found the truck. I think they found just just the, the Green front. Goblin front yeah. and they put it onto a new truck. Oh no, I thought they found the. I think they found. I think they just found the original. No, no, they didn't. They didn't put it on a truck. They actually just have it. They just made it into like one huge big display. No, they actually. I think huh? that's cool. Right? It'd be better yeah. if it was on a truck. Yeah. yeah. What an old fucking, what was that, an old Mac, I think it was. Oh, yeah. It's All right. God. <laughs> fucking beautiful truck. No, it wasn't. It was a piece of shit truck. <laughs> I, 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 it was a piece I'm of shit a, truck. I'm a semi truck driver. I, I think it's a beautiful looking truck. So. It, but it was a piece of shit truck back then, it, even. It, back then, yeah. But yeah. I mean, <laughs> no. It oh. just was cool because of the fucking goddamn goblin. <laughs> but it was a, uh, it was a fun movie. <laughs> What's your favorite scene? Uh, dude, three years of the movie was released. The Green Goblin truck was. Taken to Silent Rick's Towing and Salvage in William uh, Williamton, North Carolina. The jaw, lower teeth, tongue, and tops of the ears were gone. Uh, but they didn't say they le- brought the truck, right? What was left was severely burned. Hmm. Uh, so your John Allison yeah, they refinished Williamton it. saw it there and bought it. So, yeah. So what you see now is all fucking redone. Yeah, I, I have a... Uh, like a special edition Blu-ray of Maximum Overdrive, and they have a whole like a thirty-minute documentary 
uh, when they found it and they did a whole refinishing of it and made it look basically brand new, just like from the original movie. And just people get to get pictures with it and stuff like that. And they still take it around cross country to conventions and stuff like that. People can take a picture with it. Uh, I think it's amazing. I think it's beautiful. It'd be better if it had the truck. With it. Well, it yeah. would be, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to take a picture. I want the picture with the fucking truck. All right. That's what made it bad. Oh, yeah. So the, the, the front was badass, but. The fact that it was on a truck. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. An, ama- yeah. an amazing soundtrack to ACDC. All right. So what's your favorite scene? Uh, fuck, dude. There's a, there's a lot. There's I, a, I know. There's I know. A, there's a lot of uh, really good, like the fucking peyote scene. Um, the fucking Bushy Bill Roberts one. You know, the Buck fucking. Buckshot Roberts. Bushy Bill. Uh, yeah. Bushy Bill. <laughs> Buckshot. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. B- Sorry. Bushy Bill's the uh, old guy. Yeah. Brushy. Bill. Old Billy. Br- and that's Brushy Bill Roberts. Yeah. yeah. That's Buckshot Roberts right yeah. there. Um, you know, the fucking the lynch mob scene. Yep. Um, and fucking countless others, really. The the one that I th- that I like personally, it's a long one, is uh, when he actually goes to meet the governor. Oh. And he basically fucking talks out the details of, of what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he gets arrested and he's in custody and everything and he's being treated really fucking nice, you know. And then the uh, the attorney comes, the prosecutor, the, the prosecutor comes in. Thank you. And he's like, no, no, <laughs> you're lied to. No, fucking, I'm gonna try you. I'm gonna convict you. I'm gonna hang you. <laughs> yep. You know. So yeah, enjoy your last few days as a fucking free man now. And uh, and then it leads into um, Jane coming in to see him, and then he gets the gun in the outhouse and then escapes, you know. That that fucking deputy was so goddamn stupid. He was stupid. He was so stupid. I felt so bad for him. Dumb. Yeah. Well, well, the thing is, is when he pulled his gun, I said, don't do it. Don't do it. Because I think Billy liked him. Yeah, he did. And he he, he did not want to kill him at all, but he pulled his gun, and I was like, don't do it. Don't, please, don't do it. But he killed him. And I was just like, ah, that sucks. Yeah. And then that leads into uh, your favorite scene with the lynch mob. Yes. With the uh, the whorehouse scene. Yep. yep. When they're all hiding out in the whorehouse. So, no. no they weren't. No, that's what's after. I thought yours was. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Never mind. I'm thinking of when they escape from the pits. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. When they're. Wait, no, that, that is another one. That was another one of my favorite scenes. But you, <coughs> I was going by just one. So I picked that one. But that. Yeah. that that no, whole no, scene no. was you just. You said they escaped. I was thinking of that whole scene all together was just entertaining. Just that whole, yeah. you know, with the the wagons going all over the place, fire. I mean, it was just, it was just a very the music, everything about that scene was just fun. Yeah. So damn, Billy, sure running with a lot of guys now. <laughs> <laughs> they say my guys. I like the way they were. Uh, they basically implied that um, Arkansas Dave and Billy. We're arguing about who's leading the, the gang when there was three of them at the time. I know. <laughs> That's all was, was three of them. So which one of us is leading this one dude? <laughs> one. I mean, they were talking about who, who's this gang, who's my gang, at the uh, that scene that we played that clip on yeah. and everything yeah. else. This is your gang. No, this is your yeah. gang. So but they, they were arguing they, they, the entire time, but they they brought in um, – the the little the, the little kid they brought in Doc they brought in Chavez but I'm, they were still arguing before that point who the leader of the gang was yeah and they only brought one dude with them yeah I'm like this is this fucking it's a gang of three <laughs> <laughs> fucking kidding me god damn Billy oh man he fell from grace no shit right? <laughs> went you from can't, like you thirty can't even to be, three they won't even let you be the the undisputed leader of the gang of three god. <laughs> Oh man, uh, well shit. I think that's that's all I've got. Really, yeah, that's that's a good amount, man. Yeah, I just, so. This is this was fun. This was a fun yeah, one, even though you didn't like the first one. Had to convince I, you. No, okay. Hopefully, hopefully okay. this I, convinced you. No, no, no. I, I even said it before the show. Well, good. Say it, this in your pint review. All right, I'll say it in my pint review. So that's let's fine. go to pint reviews, Ron. God damn it! You had to put me on the fucking spot first. <laughs> I mean, you started. Yeah, you were about so. to say it anyway. Yeah, okay. okay. No, when, I don't want you to lose your train of thought. Uh, before a Super Bowl party, I told uh, the guys, "I was like, yeah, I watched it, but I wouldn't finish it yet. I still had like another like twenty, thirty minutes left of it left. So I was just like, eh, it's okay. It's not the best western. I've seen better ones. But then actually watching the end, the shootout scene at the uh, um, 
at the house, the two level house, when you said it was a single level house. Yeah. I thought it was actually more enjoyable. I was like, ah, okay. It, it ended pretty good. I, I was, I was fine. But then I watched the second one and then it made me appreciate the first one more. The second one was so much better though. I enjoyed the story better. I enjoyed the chaos, the new cast, um, the, you know, the, uh, William Patterson playing, uh, 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 Dave, uh, cat, uh, Pat Garrett. Pat, 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 Pat Garrett. Sorry, I, I'm getting my names picked why up. I give it to him. I, was, I want to see what he came up I with. Did, he did. Uh, I'm I was, sorry, that was my fault. I almost, <laughs> I almost said Dave Garrett for some reason. Um, but seriously, I thought the second one was just so enjoyable that I I love the music, the score, and everything. And it made me appreciate to the point where I appreciate mm -hmm. what you just told me that it's probably better to watch this as the first and second one. You'll appreciate it more. But the second one to me was just more. It was a Western that I actually enjoyed, and I, I love Westerns. I, I love a lot of old-school Westerns, you know, the um, the old ones from the the uh, Spaghetti Westerns with Clint Eastwood and even some John Wayne movies I love. But I, I really enjoy a lot of modern Westerns. Um, there's so many out there. Like Open Range is one of my all-time favorites with Kevin Costner and Robert Duvall. But uh, the fact is, is that this is very – to make like a younger brat pack from the 80s and turn him into this whole Western crew, this gang – uh, going through Billy the Kid's, you know, journey. And basically, I, I fucking dug it. This was great. I mean, the fucking scenes were great. I love the um, the chemistry between the guys. Um, I didn't mind Doc in the second one. I don't know why you didn't really. I understand that he was weaker, but it didn't bother me as much because then you you got to have different guys in the crew, in the game when you think about it. You, Chavez is basically more of like the the tough guy out of them, the, mm -hmm. the, the warrior, uh, Native American warrior. But if you're going to. So the way I remember you said you wanted to do the pint reviews on this, you wanted to re relate them as two movies for a pint review. Yeah. So the first one still is my least favorite, but I would still watch it again to watch the second one because it's a, a complete story, but I, it would get a lowest pint review. So if I were to combine them, because I would give the second one a five for enjoyment, that's how much I'd give it. I would take it down to a four. Okay. So I'll take a four for enjoyment for both movies together. Critically, I'd say a three and a half. I'll do a three and a half for critically because there's some stuff that bothered me in some scenes. It's a lot cheap. There's a little cheaper area on the Western, the direction. Some of the writing is a little bit off, especially in the first one, but the second one, I thought it was better. Uh, but the score really, really knocked it up. I, score really adds a lot to a movie. And I love the score of this movie, the uh, editing in the second one, everything about the second one was so enjoyable. I didn't care for the makeup on the fucking bushy, uh, bush bill or um old man bush bill whatever it's called. oh yeah I, I didn't really care for the makeup and you even had a question if you thought that was Emilio estevis yeah i was trying to figure out when when i watched it i was like is that actually him but when i was looking through the cast i was like well there's nobody in the cast no that it has definitely that name, it, absolutely so. it was yeah 100%. yeah so but I just, you could tell by the voice he had that lighter voice but it confused me because watching the first one he dies and i was like okay i'm wondering where this movie's gonna go I, it, it, but now it, i understand it now because i didn't know about the whole this actually taught me something even though this is a fictional fictional historical mm -hmm. fis, fictional historical movie but it's got some uh, historical facts in it. I didn't know anything about the whole hoax thing or if it was real, if he actually left. So that actually taught me something to the point where I went online and did some research because I, I wanted to know more about that. So, yeah, three and a half for Critical, which I think is decent for your, for both these movies together, and a uh, four for uh, enjoyment. I, I highly enjoy I was very glad to finally watch both of these together. I, I'm It was good. I was very surprised when you said that you seen never the seen the first one, one. But never the first one. The thing is, when I saw the second one, I remember the scenes. I remember—I don't even remember the music because I saw this when I was a teenager. And I remember seeing uh, um, uh, Kiefer Sutherland and all that. I remember uh, Emilio Estevez. But, you know, I, I didn't really watch movies to really enjoy them when I was a kid. So I, I saw it on, like, TNT, yeah. you know, on uh, uh, basically the cut version and stuff like that. But still, I saw it, but never saw the first one. And then I've always saw things in the past about how Young Guns 2 is always commercialized. It's like check out you know get this blu-ray young guns 2 I was like well how can they never talk about young guns one young guns one is apparently not as popular as the second one the second one's more popular than the first one for some strange reason but the numbers don't lie the first one is more popular yeah i know that's that but i don't know i like the second one better so but yeah there you go that's cool. mine yeah i i with ron i like the second one first or i'm sorry second one better um i just think they just they just the characters are a lot more developed in the second one um, critical combining the two because I had them and my phone split up. Um, so if I combine the two, I would say 
Critical is probably three and three and a quarter. Um, I watched these both just, it had been so long since I watched them. I literally watched them both today again, back to back, back to back. And so that's, it was fun. Uh, so I would say probably by doing that, it, it was enjoyable. I'd say four and a half uh, enjoyment. Just like I said, being able to just go boom, boom, watching both yep. together and things like that. Yeah. Four and a half enjoyment. It was really awesome. fun. Very cool. Still. All right. Um, I'm going to respectfully disagree with both of you guys. I think, <laughs> I think Young Guns 1 was a superior film. Yeah. Um, I do feel that Young Guns 1, it, because they're supposed to be an ensemble, both films are supposed to be an ensemble mm-hmm. films. And I think Young Guns 1 did a much better job of portraying that ensemble. So letting Billy be Billy and Billy be the main character. But it wasn't the Billy show, uh, the way Young Guns 2 felt more so. I, it was I, the Western I, Brat Pack. Yeah, I, I yeah. feel that the character development was actually much better and much more shown off. And they had more emotional development um, in the first one. I think the acting on both of them were, were were decent on both of them. I think the the soundtrack is definitely better on two, but that doesn't mean one is bad. So they both have the pluses and minuses. I think two is more, a lot more action, it, it let, letting the action carry the film. Yeah. Versus the first one was letting the story carry the film. Uh, so neither one is, it was whatever your personal preference is there. Uh, yeah. Everything. I grew up, uh, my pop's big Western, big, big Western fan. So I, I've i been exposed to these movies as far back as I can remember because mm-hmm. he enjoyed them both. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, I would give enjoyment for the combined to uh, probably four and a quarter. Um, but had a good time rewatching these. Uh, critical, are they the greatest? No, not necessarily, but considering that they were one of the first modern westerns you know that really re- had some a little bit of money behind it was really trying you know hard through some names at it and if i think it fit the tone right so with trying to revitalize a genre i'm going to give them a little bit higher of uh a rating than i would m- maybe traditionally do just because they were revitalizing a genre um, so I'll probably give it a three and three quarters. That's critical. Okay. Um, but definitely recommend. Absolutely recommend. Yeah. Cool. So far, we're three, three out of three, fours, mm-hmm. four and something mm-hmm. or four. Oh boy. All right. So um, I am gonna shit all over them because they were better in your memory than. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Thankfully, I don't pull a Ron. We need pull a Ron. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? You have a tendency of picking movies from our youth that we remember oh, as and, good. And ruining yeah. them for you and guys? destroying them. I yeah. that. <laughs> and then we rewatch and we're like, fuck, this sucks. I've only yeah. done that to the two of your movies. <laughs> Bram Stoker's Dragon <clears throat> was the last one. American Pie. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah I did ruin that for you. <laughs> no. I haven't, um, I haven't ruined anything for you. I, I mean, those were two of my favorite movies of mine. God damn it. So mm-hmm. I ruined it for everybody. Yeah, you did. Sorry, surprise, surprise, Ron ruined stuff. So you're God. saying don't listen to the American Pie episode? Because I haven't listened to it yet. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's a great <laughs> episode. <laughs> it just, it, uh, Especially, you gotta wait till you gotta listen to the end. Yeah. Did you fuck the pie? Did, I was gonna, did you fuck a pie? I did not <laughs> fuck the pie. <laughs> Ice cream scoop. Uh huh. Is that what your name for it is? Oh, oh I I remember the question. <laughs> Did you that, keep it in? Shit. Yeah. Did you keep it in? I believe so. All right, cool.